She didn't answer. Hey Mizuki, tell me something. In your dream world, I heard a phone ring. Did you hear that somewhere? Or did you just imagine it? Date, there's no point talking to her. You couldn't heal her. Her symptoms haven't improved. She'll be sent back to the hospital. Maybe the doctors can help her. Mizuki, I saw something strange in your dream. Iris, she was frozen. She was dead. What was that? Tell me, Mizuki, please. Date, there is no point attempting to speak with her. Mizuki's aphonia has not healed. Mizuki, I have to ask you. You got a Nile message yesterday, and then you went to Bloom Park. Who sent you the message? I checked her phone, but the history was white. I am trying to identify the sender now, but it will take some time. Where is this coming from? Oh, I see. This is about the body you saw in Mizuki Samyum. Her name is Iris Sagan, the girl you went to Bloom Park with today. How do you know that? Iba told me. It is one of my duties to deliver regular investigation reports. Prophecies, huh? That's why you called Iris. But, Date, come on. I know. A dream is just a dream. Doesn't necessarily have anything to do with reality. But still, I just have this gut feeling. Date, are you alright? Perhaps the sink is causing negative side effects. I hope that's all it is. It didn't go well, but it's not all bad. The sink wasn't a total waste of time. We found clues. Clues, right. Boss, I heard a ringtone in Mizuki Somnium. I know, but I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Yeah. I don't even know if it's real or something Mizuki invented. But if Mizuki really did hear that ringtone... Then there must have been a phone somewhere on site. Did CSI report anything like that? No, nothing. They searched the site, but didn't find a single thing. No need to report specifics. We saw it all from here in the control room. What the sinker sees in Somnium is projected here, remember? We've got it all recorded. <laughs> Isn't it incredible? I invented it. So we know about everything you saw. The phone, the frozen corpse. Mizuki. When we found you at the merry-go-round, you were holding the ice pick. I'm not accusing you of anything. I trust you. I just want to know why you were holding it. Answer me, Mizuki. Tate, oh. please. Yelling at her is counterproductive. Damn it. Okay. Uh... 
I know about the ringtone you heard. But I couldn't tell where it was coming from. Did Mizuki actually hear that? Or was it just a dream? Or her imagination? That's what I'm trying to find out. Can you analyze the sound or something? Unfortunately not. Ah, the corpse you saw in Somnium. You're wondering if that was some kind of vision of the future. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's see. As a man of science, I don't believe in such things. Prophecies and the like. However, if it was a prophecy, I would suggest the girl wear some kind of metal plate. Huh? You saw her. She was stabbed countless times in the back. She could have used some stab-proof armor or something. <laughs> Just indulging in the fantasy of real-life prophecies. <laughs> Don't mind me. Anyway, prophecies are simply not possible. True. You see? Peter. In a normal dream, the person experiencing the dream cannot remove themselves from it. Dreams are first-person experiences. However, the circumstances are slightly different during a sink. The sinker dives into the subject's mind and experiences their subconscious thoughts. But this dream is experienced as an observer, as though you were watching a play. The subject is the author, director, and actor. The sinker is merely the audience. Summarize for me. I think I'll go to Bloom Park again. Looking for the phone? It might be there, it might not. I just want to be sure. Take care of Mizuki, okay? Yeah, leave it to me. Let's go to Bloom Park. Now the news. Yesterday night, the body of Shoko Nadami was found. Her body was recovered from the now-defunct Bloom Park in the Kawasaki District. Autopsy reports revealed that her time of death was roughly 5 p.m. last afternoon. Police have determined that the victim was killed elsewhere and then brought to Bloom Park to be put on display. The MPD has expanded the scope of their investigation and are encouraging anyone with any information to come forward. In other news, at 6.10 p.m. today, on the outer circle of the Capital City Highway in Minato District, Tokyo, a traffic collision occurred involving five cars and at least one truck. As a result of the pileup, one man was sent to the hospital unconscious in critical condition. Six other individuals were treated for minor injuries. MPD has arrested the driver of the truck suspected to be the cause of the accident for negligence. The investigation is ongoing. I feel like we're gonna meet that person. Bloom Park, Saturday, 8.13 p.m. I'm gonna go grab some food, I'll be back. Whoop!
get back with um, French fries. It's a horse from the merry-go-round. Ghost? Idiot. It's me. Who you? Me? It's me. Whom? I said me. But are you a ghost? I'm not a ghost. Then Iba? But why? I just thought I would project myself. You seem lonely. How are you doing this? I am overlaying the image your left eye processes with augmented reality. You can't see me through your right eye, only your left. You can't just pop into my eyeball without permission. You do realize I do that all the time, right? <laughs> it was somewhere around here, right? Where I heard the phone ring. Affirmative. The source can't be far. The phone must be nearby. I do not know if it actually exists. Dreams consist of memories. But that does not mean that they perfectly mirror reality. In fact, it is more common that what occurs in dreams is distorted. For example, the events witnessed in the last Somnium were absurd, exaggerated, or otherwise warped. Clearly, they do not represent exactly what happened in reality. The ringtone as well. Mizuki didn't necessarily hear it. I understand that. But it's our only lead. That is true. Mizuki was found in that column. Why was she in there? I am connected to your brain via artificial nerve. I am part of your working brain. Our minds are one. During the sync, when the data that constitutes your ego is transferred, some of my main programming is also transferred. That is why I appear in Somnium. Do I even need to explain this sort of thing to you? I have experienced syncing many times with you. Although it is true that I have never appeared to you in this form. Come to think of it, you look kind of like you do when you're insomnia. What's that about? What do you mean? Well, you don't usually look like that. You have a somnium form and another form. Oh, this? Yes, that. Why are you doing this now? I was bored last night, so... Huh? I thought you would like it. Why would I like it? Well, I did attempt to shape myself to your preference. If you could do that, change it. Be Reika from Tiefblau. Oh my I god. I will not. Why not? Because I won't. As I mentioned earlier, I cannot say for certain if there was a phone here. However, if there is, it must be well hidden. CSI has already searched the area thoroughly, but they did not discover anything. Well hidden, huh? Maybe a place you can't see with the naked eye. Let me see. I need to analyze the surroundings. It 
It is certainly the case that the phone would be placed somewhere not readily visible to the naked eye. If it exists at all. Did you check the horse? The horse? Shoko's body was placed on this horse. The horse? Hey. Look at that. It appears to be a smartphone. I knew it was in the horse. Don't lie. You doubted me. So how do I get it out? I cannot find any weaknesses or seams in the horse's body. The horse's neck does not detach either. There must be some hole or something. I found one. Where? The mouth of the horse. I might be able to fit inside. One moment. I got it! Yes. Good job, Iba. Iba, who owned this phone? The number is... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good results came back quickly. This is a rental phone. A rental? The owner is unknown. It is registered under a false identity. Come on. Oh, dang. Date, look at the device history. gone. No outgoing call history. What about the incoming history? Only one call. 9.02 p.m. yesterday. Mizuki and Ota discovered the corpse at approximately 9 p.m. Mizuki must have heard this phone. That would connect to what we experienced in Somnium. Who is the caller? Their name isn't displayed. The number isn't in their contacts. In fact, there are no contacts. No numbers at all. The phone had no email addresses or browsing history that could be a clue either. Crunch, crunch. Just with the one clue. The call at 9.02 p.m. I had Ipa look up the number. This number is also from a rental phone. No owner is registered. Oh. What happened? The battery died. The screen turned off. Hmm. Iba, remember the number I just gave you? Of course. Call it. Uh, my name is Kaname Date. I'm with the Metropolitan Police Department. Are you an idiot? They hung up. Oh, you think so? What kind of low IQ ignoramus calls a suspicious number and says they are from the police? I couldn't help it. Oh my I wasn't God. ready. I just said the first thing that came into my head. You told me to call. I didn't think it would work. Disappointing. There is no other word for it. You're telling me. Iba, can you call it again? I'll be ready this time, I swear. Oh my god. Are you sure? Yeah, trust me. The number you have dialed is no longer in service. Damn, call deny. Call deny? Yeah, call denied. Oh, the thing Reika from the Cabaret Club did to your number. Damn, you remember that? Uh -huh. Call Reika. Near 3rd Street, Shinjuku. That's a wide range. Can you tell if they called from a smartphone? They did. I can tell from the number. 
Does it have GPS? The phone is likely capable of that function, but it has been disabled. The power also appears to be off. I cannot connect from any line. Because you blew it. Yeah, yeah. honestly, Date. Why would you say that? There would be no point to that now. The recipient is alerted to our presence and likely on the move. Right. Unknown. But it does appear to be deliberate. Did the culprit do this? Or did someone else? And for what specific purpose? Stay hydrated. Probably someone involved in the incident. They hung up as soon as they heard you mention the police, then refused further incoming calls. That behavior is at the very least suspicious. Uh. What? Why? I want to hear her voice. <laughs> she put you on call deny. Can't you try from another line? I can, but I won't. Use a payphone if you want to call her. I don't have my own phone. As long as I'm with, within range, I can use Iba to make any call I need to. Whether it's a traditional line or now message, I can have Iba help me. Iba is connected to my mind wirelessly as well. So even when she's outside of my eye socket, I can talk normally. Iba, let's get going. There's nothing more here. Where are we going? Iris's house? Yeah, I'm curious. About your prophecy? Absurd. It was nothing. Let's hope so. Let's go. Sagan Residence, Saturday, 10.30 p.m. Hmm? Coming! <gasps> Dante! A comforter. A comforting sofa. It's a sofa. A dining table. A microwave. It's a kitchen counter. There are a lot of dishes. A bookshelf. There's no books in it, but it's definitely a bookshelf. Sort of like a non-alcoholic wine. A bookshelf near the wall. The lights are on. A wooden shelf. There's a calendar and a strange object on the shelf. It's a shoebox. <laughs> Date, what are you doing? Just needed a quick whiff. What the? Okay. Why? Why? Oh my god. I'm gonna puke. It's a shoebox. It smells nice. Why? Why? Why is he like this? Comfortable sofa. There's nothing on the table. A hey, Iris. Do you like bigger speakers or smaller speakers? Uh, bigger, I guess. Could you say I like them big? Why? Please? Uh, I like them big? Again, please? Uh, I like them big, Date. Thank you. What? You are a despicable man, you know that? Why? Why? What is this game? <laughs> the speaker system. Uh, a plant. Uh, you can see the trees and sky outside. It's, a f it's for lightning. A winter iris. In the language of flowers, it means good news and hope. A telephone in the corner. There's a drawing on the wall. Did Iris draw this as a child? 
A ceiling fan is spinning. There's a door in the back of the room. A hey, Iva. What kind of furniture always catches a cold? An absurd question. Inanimate objects cannot be afflicted by viruses or bacteria. You could at least let me tell my joke. A cushion. <laughs> Alright, Iris. How you doing? By the way, where's your mom? She left earlier. She got a Nile message from someone. She looked kind of panicky, too. Where did she go? Uh, don't know. She didn't tell me. Date! You came! But aren't you a little early? Huh? You said you would play Shovel Forge with me tomorrow. No, I didn't. I did promise to go on a date with you. Tomorrow? It's not even midnight yet. I kept my promise by staying home, so you need to keep your promise, Date. Date, you have confirmed that Iris is safe. Are you done here? I know, I know. Huh. I'm hop, hop, hoppy, happy. Hop, hop, hop. Rabbit goes hop. Why do you ask? Oh, well, you see... Because I saw your dead body in a dream. Are you seriously going to tell her that? You hush. Hmm? Oh, did you want something to drink? No, sorry. I should be going. What? Leaving already? Yeah, I have some work to do. Well, will you at least watch my stream at one? Stream? Don't you remember? I'm an internet idol. And you're gonna stream online? Yeah. At one in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> you're a young woman. You shouldn't stay up so late. Oh, jeez. You sound like an old man. Because he is an old man. <laughs> it's fine. Today isn't for work. It's just a personal stream. What? That's not the issue. And tomorrow is Sunday. The day isn't the uh, issue it's either. Not Sunday, but okay. Anyway, please watch, okay? I'll ask you about it on tomorrow's date. Fine. Mm -hmm. oh. Date, I have been thinking. I am glad that nothing bad happened. Yeah, you're right. Because sometime real soon. I'm going to die. Iris's words came to me. I stepped down hard on the accelerator. Day three Sunday. Gyok AI or Gyokai. Police Headquarters, Sunday, 9.37 a.m. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hello, boss. Uh, investigation. There's been no progress, as usual. The people at the main office are so incompetent. The Her smartphone you brought me. in yesterday is still our only lead. Hopefully, there'll be a breakthrough. I am watching the case file of Shoko Nadami as it is updated in real time. Currently, it appears as though there has been no significant progress. Hmm. Hey, Date. Why not go to that bar you haven't been to in a while? The bar? Marble in Golden Yokocho. I see. Mama runs Marble. She's an informant who knows just about every. Oh, she, maybe she knows something. Okay. There would be no point. Let's not. She was returned to the hospital after the sink. She'll probably be hospitalized for a while. Hmm? Strange. Mizuki's phone is at home, Date. 
The GPS and Wi-Fi access point confirm this. She went home by herself? Possibly. But why? Unknown. There are many points of interest surrounding Mizuki, but we will need to speak with her directly. I hope she gets better soon. I asked HQ to look into it. They found a few things. First, the owner was Shoko Nadami. It was Shoko's phone? Yes. Her face was registered in the phone's facial recognition authentication. Date, you promised to go on a date with Iris yesterday. What exactly are you planning to do? What? Seriously? <laughs> it's a social date. A man's promise is his bond. You absolutely must keep your word. Have you ever heard of a white lie? So you're gonna act like it never happened. That's not what I said. The day's not over yet. If I go see her and socialize for a bit, that's a date, right? Oh, so you are not planning a real date then? No, of course not. If you say so. You almost sound relieved, Iba. Pardon? Are you jealous? Uh, impossible! <laughs> I could never be jealous of a silly little human like her. Uh-huh, sure. Oh, boss. Who called the phone? Sorry, we don't know that yet. They called from a burner phone. Burner they didn't phone? register a name. I can make a deduction with this information. We know that the phone belonged to Shoko. Right. Whoever it was made their call at 9.02 p.m. After Shoko was killed. I believe we can make an assumption here. The caller probably wasn't the murderer. Why would they call the phone of the person they just killed? Maybe. But the culprit might have been trying to get Mizuki to call. So that they can bring her to the scene. But then why hide the phone? They would have left it somewhere easier to find. True. But either way, our mysterious caller is suspicious. Consider this. They did not register the phone under their real name. And also, they hung up as soon as Date mentioned he was a cop. And on top of that, they blocked Date's number and turned off the phone. The blame lies entirely with Date. Yeah, literally. I suggest cutting his salary. I'll cut your battery. <laughs> Do it. I'll plug in somewhere. Anyway, we have to identify the caller. If you don't want your salary cut. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. All the history's been erased. There's nothing on the phone itself, but we can still look up its records. I happen to have a friend at the cell company. The head office is looking into it now. About Renju. Renju? Yesterday I told you he vanished after he was questioned. Well, we found him. Oh. Where? Central Hospital. He was brought there from a traffic accident. <gasps> He's unconscious and it's not looking good. Oh. Could it be? Capital Highway? Oh, you heard about it? It was We him. heard the report on the radio last night. I can't believe it was about Renju. About Renju. Date, you should go talk to him. He is Shoko Nadami's former husband, after all. He might have some information. But he's still asleep, isn't he? Smack him across the face and wake him up. You're his friend, right? He'll understand. <sighs> Come on. Summarize for me. I have three places to check. Central Hospital, where Renju is. Yo, Cham. Hey, Sailing Saturn. How you doing? I don't know if he's any condition to talk, but it might help. I could also go home and see Mizuki or get information about Mama at Marble. Iba, let's move. Roger that. Let's go. We're gonna go to, uh... Uh... Excuse me. We're 
we're gonna go to marble first. Marble, Sunday, no time. Well, well, if it isn't Dante! Long time no see. Is something wrong? No, I just wanted to talk. About Shoko Nadami, Ren's ex? Ren meaning Renjuku Okuria. You're as sharp as ever. I saw it all on the news. How awful. This is a painting of Saint Sebastian. Saint Sebastian was a faithful Christian who lived under Roman Emperor Diocletian. On January 20th, 288 AD, he was martyred. This painting depicts his execution. Something wrong, Date? You're staring awful hard. Nothing. Just caught my eye. Why now, of all times? That's been hanging there for a while. Really? Yeah. It was a gift from Ren a while back. I've always had it there. What? Apparently it was a gift from Renju. There's a lot of bottles of alcohol on the shelf. There's music playing over the radio. Menu, writing on the back. The bottles lined up on the counter. Mama! My goodness! You've changed since I last saw you. You're such a square now. Excuse me, that is a fridge. Uh, you can't say that to Mama? Refrigerator. What do you think this counts? Bars? I do not appreciate your pun. I appreciate that part. <laughs> a bar counter. Specials are written on the blackboard. Ducks, woman's upper lip. Poster on the wall. Ben and Clyde stew right by me. I wonder what that is. Flyer. Flyer. Poster. Poster. Stool. Sofa. Table. Sorry, Mama. I just have to always click on everything. I hope you understand, smile. Beer test. Date, what do you call a bottle of beer on your face? Um, a beard? Why would you do that? There's a TV on Hey, Date. Want to watch men in Fundoshi's pounding drums? No, thanks. I'm good. All right, Mama. Uh, how have you been? I've been okay. How are you, Date, honey? I don't see you around here much anymore. I've been busy. You used to come all the time. You and Ren, grumbling over your glasses of bourbon. We're out of bourbon. Laughing, drowning kid. each other's sorrows. Sometimes getting into arguments. One time, it even became a real fight. You remember that? Really? Oh, yes. <laughs> you don't remember? Your drunk ass spilled your beer on Ren's watch. Ren was furious, yelling about how this watch is more important than my life, or whatever. He blew up on you. That was the only time I've ever seen Ren that mad. That's why I remember it so well. Wrench's watch. Yeah, his favorite watch. He got it from his new lover. An anniversary gift. Oh, oh this was, of course, after the divorce. <laughs> Ren was so happy. He showed it off to me. He's had that watch on him ever since. Mm. I have something, but I don't know how useful it will be. No, tell me. You know how Shoko was a representative of that investment company? Yeah. They were part of a massive fraud scheme. Really? That's right. And they were in bed with the Kumakuras, the Yakuza gang. So maybe... 
The Kumakuras killed her? I don't know for sure, but they were capable of it. Maybe Shogo did something to piss off the wrong people, and they punished her for it. Glass of water, please. Mm, that's unusual. Not a bourbon. <laughs> I'm working. I drink at work all the time. <laughs> they have very different occupations. It's kind of the same. I make people throw up. You make people throw up the truth. Oh my god, mama. I love you so much. This is a bar called Marble in an alley called Golden Yokocho. She runs the place. We all call her mama. She might be technically have the body of a man, but she's got a maiden's heart. She belongs to a lot of pro LGBT groups and the like. Good job, mama! Oh, fuck. Drunk people tend to not get too careful with secrets and rumors, you know how it is. So a place like this is perfect for gathering information, whether it's politics, business, entertainment, and even crime. Mama knows it all. Whenever I get stuck on an investigation, I come see her. Summer is for me, Mama. Shoko was involved in illegal activities. Perhaps the rental phone was used for that purpose. The Kumakuras. They have a relationship with Renju. I remember him telling me that. Do you want to pay them a visit? Yeah. I hope it won't cause problems. Map. Date residence. Date residence. Sunday. No time. Izuki! Oh. Hitomi Sagan, Iris's mother. Yes, but why? Oh, Date. Sorry for showing up like this. Izuki, what are you doing? What's it look like? Bench pressing. You can talk. Yes, she's no longer mute. Uh. I received a Nile message from Izuki last night. Teacher, can you please help me? I understood right away. The girl's been through so much. I couldn't say no to one of my students. You're her teacher? That's right. Mizuki is in my homeroom class. I went to the hospital to pick her up. She left earlier. She got a Nile message from someone. Mizuki wrote a note saying that she wanted to go home. Not to Renju's house, but here. So that's the story. I apologize for coming over without asking. There's a corkboard on the wall. You're a studious man, aren't you, Date? I heard from Mizuki. Whenever she's not around, you're always on your computer, watching training videos. Training videos? Yes. A female secret agent caught in the enemy's hideout or something. Ah, yes. Yeah, that. Right. But Mizuki, did you watch that movie? Only the title. Don't touch my computer without asking. Uh... Ma'am? <laughs> a desk. File cabinet. Bunch of documents there. A chair. Armchair. Bench press. Oh, sorry. A large window. Okay, 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 okay. Large speakers. Audio. This is a nice sound system. Oh, it's nothing special. It's not top of the line. I only spent a couple of million yen. Oh, so it's cheap. That's good. I spilled soda on it on accident. You did what? Audio equipment for an audio file. Oh. Haven't paid it off yet. That stuffed animal. It's Mizuki's favorite character. What's its name again? Yeah, that's Anna Rabbit. You gave it to Mizuki on her birthday. You don't have to tell her that. I'm sorry? Anna Rabbit. Oh. Bed. Mizuki sleeps there every night. 
Little table. Coffee table. Tops glass. Cushion. That's an unusual pattern on this cushion. Oh, don't touch that. That's Date's rule. Oh. Three seat sofa. I use I also use it as a bed. I've been sleeping here for four years. Mizuki took over my bed. Oh, you're a good dad. <laughs> Entrance. Fridge. Date, I'm sorry. I looked inside your fridge earlier. Why do you have so much meat in there? Oh, I'm on a diet. You see, I'm I'm a recovering vegetarian. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I am impressed you actually got a laugh. What? It's packed with beer, food, and a bunch of meat. A kitchen. There are seasoning and cooking equipment lying around. Condiments. Seasoning and sake for cooking. What? What? what, what oven hood. Okay. Oh, wait. I, I saw that. Frying pan? Eh. Frying pan. Okay. Lamp. Lightning. This is a very nice house. Oh! Mizuki's clothes and mine are hanging on the rack. We each have basically one outfit. That's because we're rational people? I don't want to waste my precious time and brain power to think about what clothes to wear every day. A lot of successful businessmen and scientists do it. Okay, honestly, Mizuki and I do have other outfits. We just keep them somewhere else. What? <laughs> Clothes are hanging on the rack. They're mine and me. I see you two so hang your clothes side by side. You get along well. Iron pipe. Mizuki's favorite metal pipe. I have no idea what she uses it for. In just a few months, she'll need a bigger backpack. They grow up so fast. Aww. That's cute. All right then. Um, sorry. You're her teacher? Yes, elementary school. I didn't know you taught at Mizuki school. I didn't know Mizuki was living with you. I knew about her circumstances with Renju, but he described you as a relative. But I suppose not. Mizuki explained the situation to me. Mizuki lives here with me. <clears throat> but I'm not her legal guardian. That's why I've never been to school with her or anything like that. That was all left to Renju. He might not be any good at raising her, but he is her father. He takes care of all the official stuff. That was one of the conditions for me taking in Mizuki. You said you and Renju knew each other from high school, right? Yes, at Eitoku High. And you work at the public school here. That's right. A district elementary school. Is that a coincidence? You becoming the teacher of your friend's kid? Well, I hadn't always planned on being a teacher, but... It wasn't a coincidence that Mizuki ended up in my class. Renju seemed really intent on sending Mizuki to a school where I was teaching. They even moved to get into my school district. That was about five years ago, in spring. Before the divorce? Yes, but I heard that Shoko didn't have a problem with the move. Officially, Mizuki lives at Renju's house. Her local elementary is actually pretty far from here, my house. Mizuki takes the train every morning to get there. She's a little quiet, but she's a very clever girl. And more than anything, she is kind. Kind? When I'm carrying heavy bags, she'll come and help me without me asking. When I'm troubled, she'll sometimes pick flowers to give to me. Not that she has a perfect disciplinary record, but she's a good girl. What's on her record? There are a few incidents. Once, she let out all the frogs that were going to be used for science class. Another time, she punched the bully so hard that he chipped a tooth. Sounds like more than just incidents. But I like that about her. She's a little clumsy. And just like Renju. Oh, wait. I, 
Wait, no, ah! Uh, oh. When I started talking to her, Mizuki re racked the. Wait. Mizuki. Renju sent you that Nile message, didn't he? What? I got this buddy of mine. Real bad personality, but real good with technology. I got some help from them. Bad personality? It was a message sent at 8.05 last night. Does this sound familiar? Mizuki, Daddy got caught up in something serious. Please come to Bloom Park's merry-go-round right away. Daddy needs your help. Please do as I say. Yeah, that was it. It was from Daddy's phone. But I didn't want to say anything because that would make Daddy a suspect, so... <sighs> so you kept quiet. Yeah. My dad's never said anything like that to me, ever. That he was counting on me? I had to go. But you invited Ota along. Bloom Park is in the middle of the Kawasaki District. There are a number of homeless individuals in a high crime rate there. Mizuki must have been worried about going alone. X-ray! X-ray! Ma'am! Sir! That's... A plate of medical-grade titanium in her right shoulder. You know what? I actually don't know. I didn't do anything special. I just held her against me. Held her? I was hugging her close to me all night. When dawn came, I heard her say, Teacher. And then she started to cry. As you can see, she's fine now. She had a lot bottled up. It came out with the tears, I think. Oh. Does it bother you? Can you not move it? No. I can't even feel it, I'm afraid. Was there an accident, or...? I suppose you might call it that. About six years ago, I was shot in the shoulder. Oh. The nerves died, and... Anyway. The story is, one day a criminal broke into my house. He was carrying a gun. From the way he talked, he sounded insane. Drugs? Maybe. The police statement said that he wasn't under the influence of anything. Just a random crime. What? The dream I saw. Yeah, I'm fine, thanks to you. Well, not exactly you. It was Teacher who stayed with me all night. I couldn't. It's not like we have conversations about our day anyway. Damn. Because you don't talk. Because you don't listen. <gasps> Ooh. She's my teacher. She's special. She's daddy's friend and Iris's mom. Sometimes I have dinner at her house. She's extra nice to me. Oh, I know I shouldn't be. I should love all my students equally. But I see Mizuki after school sometimes, and she just looks so lonely. I can't help myself. What's wrong with Daddy? You haven't heard? Heard what? She does not know about the accident. When I got there, the ice pick was... It was... It was stuck in my mom's eye. I couldn't think straight. I... The only thing I could think was... I had to get it out. So you pulled it out? Yeah. After Ota ran away? Yeah. Did you hear any sounds? Sounds? Like a ringing phone? Oh, I think I did hear something like that. But I don't remember where it was coming from. I just got scared and ran into the column. The door was open a little, so... Confirmed. Ooh. 
The call at 9.02 p.m. It must have been the phone inside the horse ringing. I don't think so. Her eye socket was empty? Yeah. Thanks. I'm sorry to have to ask you stuff like that. It's okay. So it was not Mizuki who took the eyeball? No. It was already gone when she got there. That eyeball has yet to be found. It was probably taken by the culprit. Anyway, Mizuki has recovered from her aphonia. Isn't that wonderful? It is. Yeah. I did not know that Hitomi was Mizuki's homeroom teacher. Hmm. Is there something wrong? No. It's nothing. We go to the hospital. Central Hospital, Sunday, no time. Date, look! Huh? Sabako is coming out of the TV! Huh? Who? Bedside, Bedside table. table? Headlight Fable. That's not even a thing. Bedside table. Bed. There's no one here. Indeed, the bed is empty. He snuck out at night. Huh? Snuck out? Mr. Okiura arrived with internal injuries. The surgery was successful, but he was in no condition to move. He would have opened up his wounds, and then he would be in real trouble. Real trouble, huh? Yes. I can't believe it. Where could he have gone? Renju is extremely suspicious. He has no alibi for the time of Shoko's murder. That was noted in the investigation report. That's not so strange, though. There's more. I cannot reach Renju by any means. He has not attempted to visit Mizuki in the hospital. Even though she is his daughter and witnessed a traumatic event. Despite all this, he runs from the hospital, even with substantial injuries. Perhaps this is an escape. Iba, call in this gate. Roger that. Hello, this is Lemniscate Entertainment Offices. Let me hear your message. Thank you. What kind of employee training do they have there? <laughs> anyway, I gave them my name and told them about Renji. Do you have any idea where he might be? Uh, sorry, no clue. I'm trying to get in touch with him, too. So far, nothing. I'm getting worried. He must be a mess right now. Oh, wait. Maybe he's at the Maid Cafe. Maid Cafe? Do you mean Sunfish Pocket? Yeah, that's the one. Like, out of nowhere, Renji was like, I'm gonna rent out Sunfish Pocket. I guess he was gonna throw, like, a secret party or something? But with the accident and all, still, he might be there. I know about Sunfish Pocket. Renji used to talk about it. He runs Lemnus Gate as well as that maid cafe. Thank you. You've been very helpful. No problem. Farewell. Sunfish Pocket, huh? It is worth scoping out. Mr. Okiura's room. I'm certain of it. He's 
not here, as you can see. I'm a nurse. I work here. I'm assigned to Mr. Okiera. Alright. Uh, let's go to Kamakura office first. Kamakura office, Sunday. No time. Who's this asshole? You made a big mistake coming here. Go home. All right. Bye then. Hey, Date. What? Ugh, I hate dealing with these chumps. Didn't you hear me? Do you want to die, old man? <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> it's funny the second time. Sorry for the late introduction. I'm with the MPD. A cop, huh? I just like the music. Ah, oh, this music here is so good. So, you want to explain what the fuck a cop is doing in my office? Sorry. I think we should exchange names before exchanging expletives. Name's MoMA, the warhorse. Don't give a fuck what your name is. All right, MoMA. I have a few things I want to ask you. Two days ago at Bloom Park, a woman's corpse was found. Have you heard the name Shoko Nidami? Sure have. How? Heard it on the news. The media is making a real fuss about this new serial killer. Can't help but hear about it. What? The chairman is right in front of you. What? I run the Kumakura gang. I'm Moma Kumakura. That can't be right. The chairman of the Kumakuras is Rohan. Oh, oh, oh. You aren't the chairman. Yo, asshole. You need a lesson in manners? Date, wait. I did some research and discovered that Rohan Kumakura died last year. He leapt to his death from the roof of a building. A suicide? But MoMA did not take over last year. MoMA took over six years ago. Six years ago? Don't know nothing about her. I know her face and her name. It was on the news. Nothing else. I have no idea what you're talking about, cop. You must have gotten some bad info. Fuck no. Why would we do that? Date, look at this. A thermograph from when you inquired about Shoko. Body temperature rising. A red hot lie. It appears that way. How do I get him to cop to it? Remove his fingernails one by one. Huh? Not my style. Blackmail him? Blackmail? Find his weakness and threaten him with it. Let's examine the room. Perhaps we may discover one of his secrets. Do you think that pulls out into a bed? What would be the point of that? Wow, that is a big flying squirrel. <laughs> that is a tiger. <laughs> How does it just see the pandas? If I make a wish, will it come true? That is not Shenron. I love that so much. X-ray the crest. Oh. 
There's a hidden safe behind the crest. There is something inside. I recognize that. Aset. It's just like the one I saw at Matsushita Diner. An Aset figure. Correct. But why is that there? Unknown, but perhaps. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be a fan of Aset, would you? What? Who's that? A schoolgirl internet idol. You know what I'm talking about. Think you can get away with talking to our boss like that? He's tough as bricks and hard as nails. You never be into pussy shit like that, you fucker. Dang. Shadows. Threat! A silhouette! ASAP! Water. Wait! Uh, sweat! ASAP! ASAP, you bet! Uh. Fears. Upset? Uh, regret? ASAP! Just as I thought. Boss? What's this? Sh shut up! Don't look at me! Get out of here! <laughs> Did you hear me? I said get the fuck out of here! Oh my god. Yes, sir. The fat one grabbed the skinny one and dragged him out. Oh my god. I've got your secret now. If you don't want that to get out, you better answer my questions. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <sighs> right. We do have connections with the investment company Shoko worked at. A company that commits fraud? No comment. Anyway, we never had any problems with Shoko. There'd be no reason for us to kill her. No point hiding it, right? Yeah, I know about Shoko's ex. I told Moma about Wrench's accident and about his appearance from the hospital. Do you know where he is? Nope, sure don't. It's not like we keep in touch or anything. I detect no abnormalities in his thermograph. Looks like he's not lying. Rohan was my older brother. He was my big brother in this organization, and my blood brother. But he's gone now. A suicide? Yeah. After breaking out of the hospital. About 20 years back, both he and I were the new guys in the Ujisaki family. The Ujisakis are above the Kumakuras in the hierarchy. At the time, we were in a turf war with a rival gang. One day, one of their boys walks in here and beats my bro's face in with a metal bat. His vision's been fucked on the right side ever since. The doctors say he can still see. But it doesn't register. Like, huh. he only eats food off the left side of his plate. And if he's drawing a picture or whatever, he only draws the left side. Oh. Date, a question for Moma. Is Rohan left-handed? Why? Just ask him, please. Yeah, he was. Confirmed. Rohan must suffer from hemispatial neglect on his right side. As you are aware, the brain is divided into what is called the right brain and left brain. One side develops into the superior hemisphere, responsible for language and higher functions. The other side controls spatial recognition ability. In most people, the superior hemisphere is the left brain. In roughly one-third of the population, the right brain is the superior hemisphere. This is often linked to left-handedness. Oh. MoMA just confirmed that Rohan was left-handed. From this, we can conclude that his right brain was his superior hemisphere, and his left brain was the inferior hemisphere. Rohan suffered a beating on the left side of his head. That must have damaged his left brain. That caused him to lose his spatial cognitive ability. A 
Us Kumakuras are a branch of the Ujisaki family. The Ujisaki family runs a yearly golf tournament. Mandatory attendance. We were all at the tournament those days. We only got back this morning. You've been asked a hotel. They'll tell you. Date, I did some research. The hotel's record of guests does list the Kumakura members. They were also seen on several surveillance cameras. It is not possible that any of the Kumakuras could have killed Shoko, including Moma. Hey, Moma, I've got a favor to ask. Can you get me information on Renju? His whereabouts, rumors on where he might be, anything. I need some leads. And what if I refuse? And your gang finds out you're the world's biggest ASAP fan. In exchange for helping me, there's a reward in it for you. A reward? I'll let you meet ASAP. What? I met her yesterday at Lemniscate. We're acquaintances now. Really? Yeah. You promise? Yeah, I promise. Oh my god, why? Anyway, after getting the shit beaten out of him, he changed, man. He became cold-blooded. I'm talking ruthless. One time, we captured some street bosses from a rival gang. Bro grabbed him by the big toe and took a potato peeler to him. From the toe to the thigh. Totally blank expression. Like he was scraping bonito flakes. Anyway. Sick fuckers like that always end up running the world, don't they? He started climbing the ranks, and eventually he was taken in by the Ujisaki family boss. The Ujisakis decided to make him head of our gang, and that's how we became the Kumakuras. Peeled human gum. <laughs> about six years ago, I remember him telling me about something big. Some threat to the Kumakuras that could bring us all down. He didn't give me the details, but I figured it was something from his past coming back to bite him in the ass, you know? Anyway, his plan was to handle his shit internally. Didn't want too many people knowing about it. But whatever he planned didn't work. When the chips were down, he decided to handle it himself. He ended up shooting some guy in his house. Oh. A few days later, cops busted him. Prosecution tried to get him on premeditated murder, but it was determined that he was insane at the time. Maybe they were right, you know? His head's been getting worse and worse for the past 20 years. He gets relapses and all that. Anyway, they decided to keep him in a special hospital. And naturally, because I'm his brother and next in line, I was the successor. How did you know? You're hiding an A-set figure in the safe. How did you know that? I have superpowers. Yeah, sure. The Kumakuras appear to be unrelated to the investigation. It was still worth it just to find out Moma is an A-set fan. Really? That information might come in handy later. Let's go somewhere else, Iva. We got what we needed here. Sunfish pocket, let's go! Sunfish pocket, Sunday, 999 reference. No time. Oh. Welcome home, Sea King! Sea King? Oh! <laughs> Is this your first time here? Uh, sorry. I'm not here as a customer. I need to talk to someone about something. Renju? Oh! Oda! Jeez, kid. Excuse me. Oh, 
say? Other mermaids. The girls are working. Oh wait. I, uh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Hold on. What? Huh? Shit. Huh? Why? 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 Date, I must be the bearer of bad news. Even with X-ray, her clothes will not turn transparent. Thank you. Your heart rate and blood pressure is rising. <laughs> The concentration of phenylethylamine in your blood is rising rapidly. What are you excited about? Okay, hold on, hold on. Light. Light looks like jellyfish. Sign. Cafe signboard. It says sunfish pocket. Lifesaver. It looks like a flotation device, right? But it's actually a huge donut. Okay, ma'am. Kitchen door. Kitchen window. You absolute disgrace! How many times have I told you to cut the bones properly, you bastard? It's just... What kind of cafe is this? Was that a... Was, was that a Gordon Ramsay reference? <laughs> what kind of furniture can you drink? Um, a light beer? Nope. You can't drink rice. The answer is liquefied leather sofa. How would anyone ever guess that? Can you even drink that? Oh. What's in the box? The severed bottom half of a mermaid. Well, you could have just said the tail. That customer looks like he's on death's door. Let's hope he's not blowing his life savings here. You look seriously ill. You look seriously ill. You look seriously ill. Temple. A temple. Menu. Cafe menu. Options. Ah, uh, 2,000 yen. And what is ah? Uh, <laughs> rusty oil drums. Box. Apparently, a mermaid tail is in there. Tridents. Chair. Cream soda! Sounds about right for Oda. Menu. Omelette rice. Looks delicious. Window. Second floor. There's nothing out of the window. Uh, 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 uh. Pictures. There are pictures of girls on the So, display. who's your type, Date? Sorry, but no one stands out to me. I don't go for the spawn. I'm more of a big catch fisherman. <laughs> Uh, what? I think he's saying he likes older women. <laughs> what is this game? It's a security camera, a doorway. Okay, alright, hold on, Ota, I gotta talk to her. What? No, he never showed up. When was the last time he came here? Hmm, let me think. He's just the owner, not the manager, so... He comes sometimes, but not all that often. That's what we call the customers. Us mermaids serve the Sea Kings. And we really are mermaids, you know. Don't tell anyone. What? Huh? Everyone working here is a real mermaid. But you have legs. They were a gift from Poseidon. We were given legs and feet. So that we can gather riches and foreign currency in the labor market. Uh. Date, let's go. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> There's still so much to learn. Oh my god. Do not listen to her siren song. Oh. By the way, I didn't introduce oh my myself god. yet. I'm Konami Date of the Metropolitan Police Department. You're a detective? Something like that. Goodbye. Ota, please. Uh, okay. Sure am. I come here whenever I've got time and money. 
I was here yesterday, too. Around 6.30, I think? But I couldn't get in. I saw a sign at the entrance that said the whole place got rented out for some party. But I came all the way to Akihabara, you know? Akihabara. I didn't want to just go home, so I bought a new one. A new what? A phone? I dropped my old one in a puddle, remember? Oh, have you seen Renju? No, haven't seen him. Is this related to what happened at Bloom Park? Yes. The body on the merry-go-round was Renju's ex-wife. I didn't know that she was Mizuki's mom. Did she change her name or something? Mizuki saw her own mother's dead body, and I just left her there and ran away like a coward. I'm such a piece of shit. Yep. I should have stayed. I should have done something. Why did I do that? Oh, is it eating you up inside, Ota? <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, well, okay. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I. <laughs> While you're sitting here adding up your options? But you can order two, Date. That's not why I'm mad, Ota. What's with that spear? It's not a spear. It's a it belongs to Poseidon. Oh my god. god of the sea. <sighs> Someone. You know, a trident. Someone. Why do you have that? We treat our customers like lords of the sea. We give them these tridents. It's like a little ranking system we do. The color changes depending on your rank. There's bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and at the very top, or a calcum. So it basically measures how much money you've spent on these girls. Well, that doesn't sound very nice. It's more like a way to exploit their vanity. <laughs> to separate our customers from their money as much as possible. That sounds even worse. <laughs> I'm still gold. Not that good. How much did you spend to get that? Um, about oh. 200,000 yen. Jesus! I suddenly understand why someone would want to kill another human. <laughs> why are you here? Because I'm worried about Tessa. Iris, what's the matter? Yesterday night. Well, it was past midnight, so more like this morning? I don't care about the timing. What happened? Tessa was streaming, as usual, from her living room at home. But suddenly... Actually, let me just show you. Uh oh I always record her streams. Oh, God. Oh, boy, here we go. I'm kind of nervous. It's been a while. Hmm. Got it. I'll try my best. Okay, everyone. Here's my debut song. Let's hit it. Cat. For now. I'll sing the rest next time. Bye. One hour into the stream, so about 2 a.m.? That's weird, right? 
someone coming to visit at 2 in the morning, and then she leaves? She looked really serious too. I was worried about her, so I tried to call, but she didn't answer. She didn't read any of my Nile messages either. I thought maybe the people at Sunfish Pocket would know something. Tessie used to work here. She made a lot of friends. I'm one of them. But I don't know what she's up to. I asked the other girls too, but no one knows anything. Iba, call Iris. The number you are attempting to dial is either offline or unavailable. No way. Anyway, prophecies are simply not possible. Something wrong, sir? Uh, no, nothing. I wonder if Tessa's okay. I'm so worried about her, I can barely eat. As you eat... Oh my god, I can't. Uh... <laughs> I can't. Oh god, my... No! You look like you can eat just fine. Summarize, please. Date, Renju is not at this location. We have other areas we need to search. Yeah, you're right. We get out of here! Abyss headquarters, let's go! Liver is filthy. Would you like me to wipe it off? No, it's perfectly clean. How would you even wipe it anyway? Date, last night when you were asleep, I snuck out and put something inside the glove box. What? Flour in a plastic bag. Why would you do that? I'm a cop! I don't get the reference, I'm sorry. Alright, Ibris. Iba, sorry. Uh... Scream! Oh. Ghost! I have been here for several minutes now. Could you not come out like that? Why not? If people see you, they'll freak out. Do not worry. I can only be seen by you. I am sending this projection of myself directly to your brain. Oh, right. But returning to your answer, why would people freak out if they saw me? Isn't it obvious? A girl looking like you, dressed like that, sitting next to me? People would think I'm a pervert. Hmm. So if you continue <laughs> saying such things, I will self-destruct. An AI never lies. So, you weren't kidding. What happens if you self-destruct in my eye socket? Your skull would pop like a balloon. Uh-oh. Oh, there you go. Okay. My body is full of cutting-edge technology and state secrets. In terms of hardware as well as software. I am capable of hacking 99.99% of computers that currently exist. What if someone managed to steal me? It would threaten not only the police force, but the existence of the state itself. My self-destruct function is designed to prevent such a scenario from ever occurring. Strictly speaking, I am not capable of self-destructing. What do you mean? I obey the three laws of robotics as laid down by Isaac Asimov. 
I cannot harm myself. However, a person with administrative authority could order me to self-destruct. You have such authority. Let us determine a code number. One that will activate the detonator. Command 41205. If you issue this command, I will detonate. No, that's still too dangerous. We need some kind of safety. The number will be the first lock. If I give you the second command within one minute of the first... What is the second command? Let's see. How about if I tell a lie? A lie? Something that's not the truth. If I say something untrue, I want you to regard it as the second command. Understood. And one more thing. Even if I die, do not worry. I will not be gone. Huh? Everything that I see and hear is uploaded to the cloud. All by wireless communication in real time. Even if my body is destroyed, my backup data will not be lost. My memories, as well as my core programming, will be preserved. So you're basically immortal. Yes. As long as the server is alive. Hey, about that five-digit command, how did you come up with that number? It is my favorite number. There is no particular meaning. Really? I still think one, one, uh, zero, three, seven should have been better, but you know, that's just me. Where could Renju be? I also wonder where he could have gone. I'm about to call Mama and Marble. Oh, it's you, Date. Something wrong? Hi, Mama. Do you know where Renju is? No, sorry. It's been a long time since I've seen Ren. Did something happen to him? I told Mama about Renju's accident and about his disappearance from the hospital. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Leave it to me. I'll contact you if I get any information. Please do. I still cannot contact her. Her phone is either off or out of range of cellular signal. Are you worried about her? I mean, yesterday there was definitely something wrong. I saw it in Mizuki's Somnium. Iris's body. Frozen solid. I'm already tired of this, Iba. That's not like you. Is something wrong? Shogo's estimated TOD was two days ago, 5 p.m. It's been more than 48 hours. But our investigation has made zero progress. Sorry. I just wanted to whine about it for a bit. In five years, this is the first time I've heard you so dejected. Six years ago, I lost my past. Names, addresses, family, childhood, everything. But that wasn't all I lost. My left eye. I don't know how I lost it. The earliest memory that I have is of me aimlessly wandering in the streets of Shinjuku. Until a good friend gave me a hand. Come with me. To where you belong. Boss helped me become a cop and assigned me to Abyss. A year later, I was called into the control room where Pewter showed me something extraordinary. The official title is A.I. Ball. You may call her Iba. The artificial intelligence contained within this sphere is nothing short of miraculous. An autonomous artificial intelligence birthed from collective nanotechnology. Its ability to think is controlled by a program we call the Wadjet System. Special Agent Date, from today forward, this is your partner. 
She will be your personal computer and your personal companion. It's been five years since then. Five years and a number of tough cases, but... This time is different. About Shoko Nadami's murder, we still need to see the investigation through. The only relevant lead is the call made to Shoko's phone. Aiba, is that number still turned off? Please wait. Date, the line is connected. Really? Really. Call it. Isn't your number being blocked? Try from a different line. You can do that, right? I can. Which line would you like to use? <gasps> do I have to pick? Uh... I see. The caller did attempt to call Shoko's phone. If we call from that line... Right, he might pick up. But a normal call may yield the same results as before. I have an idea. Do you remember what Shoko's voice sounded like? Yes, I do. I remember everything that I see and hear. Can you reproduce her voice? Analyzing recorded audio data. Imitation should be possible. Well then? You want me to call with Shoko's voice? Yeah. Me? You're the only one who can. Fine. I suppose we have no choice. Are you sure you can handle this? I am an artificial intelligence. Not a human prone to nervous breakdowns and mistakes like you. Damn. All right, Hal, let's see what you can do. <laughs> it, it's connected. It's ringing. I thought you said you did get nervous. Uh, 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 uh. Calm down, deep breaths. <sighs> Wait a minute. What? I'm an AI. I don't take breaths. Focus, they're gonna hang up. <laughs> um, hello. This is Nadami Shoko. Impossible. Shoko is dead. Yes, I died two days ago. Idiot, why did you say that? Oh, by I, I meant my twin sister, Shoku. Your twin sister? His name! Get his name! How? Oh, what? Oh, fuck! Uh, uh... Is this Yamada? No. This is... Say it, say it! Are you sure you have the right number? <gasps> can't be. How did you get Shoko's phone? Oh, no! No good. Quick, think of another plan! Uh, uh, uh! Uh, uh, uh! Too suspicious. Okay, I'm trying. Okay, let me think. Huh? You're an imposter. I beg your pardon. Oh my god! Damn it, dumb. You sound completely different. How did you get that phone? This is my phone. Liar! You're impersonating him. That's enough. I am So Sejima, <gasps> the congressman. Politician? Sajima. Sorry for doubting you. It's fine. What were you calling me for? 
Oh, uh, sorry, something urgent just came up. I will call back later. Goodbye. Why so? Unknown. But that was definitely so Sejima. I was able to match his voice to public records of him speaking. So Sejima, a minor celebrity. He even goes on TV sometimes. <clears throat> Two days ago, he called Shoko. Why? In any case, that was an excellent performance, was it not? Yeah, good job. Is that all? What, do you want me to pat you on the head? N no nothing like that. Oh my god. I tap my fingertips against my left eye. Ugh! <laughs> Stop! It tickles! Rub, rub, rub! <laughs> Stop! The nerve might break! A call came soon after. What is this game? Oh. Boss? Date! A call from Investigation HQ. That pats for Ayaba. Connect me. <laughs> is this Special Agent Date from Abyss? My name is Akasuka from HQ. I'm investigating the Shoko Nadami case. There's something that you need to hear. What is it? We got a phone call earlier from a prisoner at Fuchu Prison. A prisoner? We saved the call. I think you should give it a listen. Who is this? In here? I'm known as number 89. What is this call concerning? I know who killed Shoko Nadami. And if you let me out of here, I will tell you who it is. I suppose you might say I'm looking for a plea bargain. He will kill again, you know. And he'll take their eye while they're still alive. So it is there a guy. There will be more bodies. If you want to stop this serial killer, I suggest you take my offer. I'll be seeing you. This has to be a prank. That's what I thought, too. But I felt I should give you the heads up anyway. Good idea. Thank you. Thanks, Detective. Good luck. You sound like a... Do you think it really is just a prank? Well, to be sure, look into number 89. Roger that. But for now... So, Sejima. Oh, that guy sounded like Gerald from Fire Emblem. Yeah! Probably the same person. Sejima Residence, Sunday, 7.54 p.m. Hey, you can't be here without permission. I'll call the police! What happened? Sir. A uh, police officer. You. Oh, my what? Can I help you? Yes. I need to ask you a few questions. I'm a very busy man. You can ask me tomorrow during normal business hours. It's about Shoko Nadami. You can't tell me you've never heard of her. As a matter of fact, I have. It was reported on the news that she was killed. Two days ago at 9.02 p.m., you made a phone call to Shoko Nadami. A phone call? I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. I'm pretty sure they have the same VA, DC Douglas. I actually met DC Douglas um, in Anna Minneapolis, in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, in anime convention. He's a weird guy. Cool, but pretty weird guy. <laughs> Thermo. So much blood. Where's all this red coming from? It's a thermograph. Yeah, I knew that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, he's lying. How do I get him to admit it? What will make so confess he killed Shoko? Uh... Call him? Iba, call his phone again. Using Shoko's line. Understood. You're not gonna pick it up?
message from Shoko. I had her give you a call. What? It'll stop ringing soon. Three, two, one. See? Fine. I did call her. Around nine o'clock, just like you said. Finally confessing? There's nothing to confess. I did nothing wrong. Then why did you lie to me? Because I didn't want to get involved in all of this nonsense. You mean to tell me that I am a suspect? Yes. My call was after Shoko died. If I were the killer, why would I do that? I don't know. But I'm asking the questions. Well, do you have a warrant? No. I thought not. I'll be leaving now. Why? Good night, detective. Why? Uh, oh, so I so went back into his mansion. I tried to follow, but so his bodyguard blocked my path. Uh. Go home. Unless you want to get kicked out. I don't know. Even if I did, it would be confidential. I've heard of her, but I've never met her. I saw her on the news. I don't know what you're talking about. No, nothing special. Not any different from any other politician, anyway. Do you know where So was Friday at 5 p.m.? Here, in the mansion. Can anyone corroborate that? Maybe the housekeeper. Date, a minute. What happened? So is on the move. Oh. Most likely in a car. How do you know? I hacked So's smartphone and I'm currently tracking the GPS. Oh. Not his rental phone, the one registered under his name. Where is he headed? Unknown. Somewhere to the east. Keep tracking him. Roger that. A curse sporadic tape. <laughs> oh my god. Yo. Harbor Warehouse District, Sunday, 8.51 p.m. So doing here. Date, my apologies. What's wrong? My battery is low. Are you serious? Uh oh. I guess it's not going to be a problem. I can still see out of my right eye. My vision halved, so I went in and I went into the warehouse, bro. What the heck? Date is the type to never charge his iPhone. <laughs> Can I not? Something covered in a white cloth is on the this table. This is. Oh. It's a head. I know it. It's gonna be a head. Uh, it can't be. Masaka. Oh! Iris. Wait, she actually died? Iba, what's your charge? Currently at 2%. Ah. Can you make a call? I can. I am connected to the power supply. What do you... Hurry. Just uh. connect me to boss. 
Date, what's wrong? I found a body. What? She was murdered. Multiple stab wounds to the back. And one eye missing. Oh, no. Location is Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. The victim... The victim is Iris Sagan. Iris? I'll tell you more later. Just send CSI to the scene right away. And one more thing. Congressman So Sejima. Bring him to Abyss. Wait a minute, why? I'll take responsibility for everything. Just do it, please. <sighs> All right. Because sometime real soon, I'm going to die. God damn it! At po police headquarters, Sunday, 9.48 p.m. Do you honestly think you can get away with this? Funny, I was gonna ask you the same thing. Date, calm down. You know Iris Sagan, don't you? No, I don't. I've never heard of her. Maybe he's lying, maybe he's not. But even if he doesn't know her name... Oh, even though So doesn't know Iris... Uh, uh... Uh? That information is irrelevant. Uh, uh, uh. I put a picture of Iris in front of So. So you've never met her before? I have not. Have you seen her corpse? Corpse? I know you've seen her body. Based on what? Where she was. That... That's an important clue, but there's something else. Iris's body was found at Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. What does that have to do with anything? I stood up and went to the corner of the room. I picked up the PC monitor and put it on the desk in front of him. <laughs> this. Iba, play the video. Right away. I see. Then I suppose you know I was there. Then you saw the body. I didn't. I was at the warehouse. But I didn't see any corpses there. Don't lie to me! Huh? It's the truth. Then what were you doing there? I choose to remain silent. What? You what? Remain silent. Huh? As is my right, guaranteed by law. Uh... <sighs> Remember that I am a politician. I know my rights. Date, can I get a second? Yeah. What? Does it matter if he saw the body or not in this case? Um. He's a busy man. If we hold him here too long. You want me to stop beating around the bush? I certainly do. You believe that Sosajima is her killer, or is at the very least involved in the crime somehow? Yeah. Why not ask him for his alibi first? Uh, I need to know Sol's alibi. Uh, 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 uh. This isn't exactly relevant, but it is interesting. Uh, this? No, doesn't matter. Time of death. Iris was killed sometime between 2 and 3 in the morning. Do you have an alibi for that time? I was playing Mahjong all night, at a place called Dora Dora in Shinjuku. Dora Dora. Politician spending all night in a Mahjong parlor. An exclusive Mahjong parlor, yes. 
It's Mahjong. You should have had three opponents with you. Indeed I did. But they were all strangers. I don't remember their names. Date, I did some research. Yes? Dora Dora is a private room Mahjong parlor. Uh-huh. It is owned and operated by one individual. If the rooms are private, that limits the number of potential witnesses. The shopkeeper might be in So's pocket, and he's the only one we could ask about So's alibi. Especially if he doesn't remember any of the three people he played against. He might as well not have an alibi. That's not much of an alibi, So. Please, this is ridiculous. First you suspect me in the matter of Shoko Nadami, and now this? I haven't killed anyone. Not Shoko, not Iris. Besides, if I stabbed a woman, why would I bring her to a cold storage warehouse? Wait. What did you say? <gasps> oh, well, but, but, he did. I remembered. He slipped up. If I stabbed a woman, so does know about the corpse because. Uh. I never mentioned Iris's cause of death. How do you know she was stabbed? Because... <gasps> because you did it? Don't be stupid. Huh? Then how do you know? Stop dodging the question and answer. <clears throat> Boss, give me permission to sink. Oh. He can't hide inside his own head. You've got it. Sink with him. Oh my god. <sighs> I put so into chemically induced... But do not worry, it will not affect the Okay, sink. this time I won't frick up. Okay, Dante. Let's do it. Okay. Right. Please, don't forget the six minute time. Limit. I won't, Pewter. I won't. <sighs> Say it every time. I may be pretty dumb, but like, I got this. Let us begin. It goes all. Very bright. What? Ah! Iba, why? Did you witness my superior driving technique? No. Yeah, I saw you get in an accident. <laughs> no! I only pressed the wrong pedal! That's what you call an accident. Oh, look at that. Don't change the subject. Observe the surroundings. Sick drifting skills, Iba. Uh, Yotota, Yotota. Huh. In a word, I'd say it's strange. Maybe this is So's corrupt nature manifesting itself. The man's Somnium is almost as corrupt as he is. I am impressed. Uh, never mind. Yeah, this is a real bad dream. Let's get the clues we need and get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. It's Iris. What on earth is she doing here? Oh. <laughs> ah! Iris! We can't go any closer? We cannot. That silhouette we saw. This is so Somnium. During a sink, we experience the subject's dreams from a third person perspective. In other words, it has to be him. I cannot say for certain, but. Probably. Oh my god, please, no. No! What's going on? It appears that time is looping in this warped space. Time is looping? Can't you do something about that? What exactly do you propose I do? You're telling me I have to watch this scene over and over? I don't want to watch it either. Well then? I suppose we can help her. We may then be able to ask this manifestation of Iris some questions. Please. Huh? Sure, do whatever you gotta do. 
Yes. We have to save Iris, no matter what. Yeah. But to do that, we gotta do something about that huge wooden box. Somnium scan! Activate! escapes you may discover so secret okay, 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 okay. a large wooden box a warehouse door uh, map. yes I understand G. A forklift. Drive. Ugh. A warehouse door. Wait, uh. I hear laughter, but they're far away. I cannot tell who the voice belongs to. Roger that. Leave it to me. It is time to unleash the Drift King. Okay. Didn't you crash a minute ago? Besides, the forklift is front wheel drive. You should jump in. You might unlock a bonus stage. Do you have the mind of a child? Negative time. You picked up a timer that has a negative effect. Negative timers can multiply time or force you to use them. If you pick one, be careful. A warehouse door. Is anyone there? Can I put try from No now response. On? Even if there was someone there, they might not answer. A mysterious warp space suddenly left, appeared. Time. Uh, what's this? Here? Yeah. My hand. Yeah, you can do it. I suppose if I must. I've seen a boss character like this before. <laughs> no! Ah! Uh, Stop it! Are those boxes in the way too? We do not have time to move each one. If only we could use that crane. box immediately. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, map, map, map. Uh, here. Maybe we can go there. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. A door to the warehouse. I cannot see inside. Should have led to the warehouse, but okay, 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 okay. is this some kind of control panel? <laughs> I put fighting game. <laughs> Got it. Well, if that wasn't it. It's a control panel. How about we lower it then? <laughs> no. Got it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Four minutes. Thank you, boss. A warehouse door. Even if there was someone there, they might not answer. It's a control panel. The one that is difficult for humans to input? Yeah, the GH Raging Combo. Fine, just be quiet. No, wait. Inputting that sequence of commands with the lever shaped like this... I think you can do it. I'll try. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> A warehouse door. Delivery! <laughs> okay, okay, um. Three minutes, Dante. Thanks. Thanks, boss. from a crane. Not that I am against it, but... Can you not climb? I don't see any place to get a hold. Okay. Do I have to push this? A wooden box hanging from a crane. It is either stuck to the ground or you're just weak or you're or you're or you okay, okay, okay. Whoop. 
where am I? Where am I? Here. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. A warehouse. Delivery. Okay, okay. Three minutes, Date. Thanks, mom. I mean, boss. Thanks, boss. <laughs> Pieces of concrete. Are you okay? I want to go home. It's okay. Don't push yourself. Just give it another shot, okay? You can do it. Stop it. You trying to be nice makes me want to cry. That was funny. A warehouse door. A warehouse door. Oh. oh. What's this? Something came out. Edible seaweed made this way was thought to be a delicacy for nobles during the Heian era. Nobody needs to hear your superfluous narration. hanging from the crane in the way now was there something under the wooden box oh god let's just stop go back it. and lift it up for now stop it stop it with the noise okay 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 i'm gonna hold on hold on hold on we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna do this yes it's okay, it's okay. I'm getting it, I'm getting it, I'm getting it. Okay, okay, okay. A warehouse... Deliver... Okay, okay, okay. Three minutes, Date. Thanks, boss. Pieces of... A warehouse. What's this? Stop it with the noise. I don't want I don't like this. Please, please, stop it. Okay, okay, okay. 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 What is 
looks like a premium channel before you pay for it. Oh, I got smaller. If you got any smaller, you'd be as flat as a surfboard. Damn. You have less than two minutes, Date. Hurry. Girl, I'm trying. A crane. I hear deep, excited breathing. Don't tell me. Is it a panty snatcher? No! Don't say things like that. A crane. about this stone. Can you not I don't A warehouse door. A warehouse. Did I go this way? Delivery. I think I did. Oh my God! Uh. Is this Doctor, some you've kind got less of... than thirty seconds. Thanks, Mom. Uh, uh. Understood. Something underneath it? Did I do it? Oh. It appears Iris was saved. Barely. That shadow... must be...
Day 3 Sunday, Kyo's AI, or Kyosai. Iris was in the Somnium earlier. Yes, we saw. An unidentified figure tried to stab Iris to death. And Date and Aiba... Hmm... Who is that figure? Probably so himself. True, he could imagine himself in his Somnium that way. Mr. Date's ego algorithm processed the figure into that particular image. What are you people talking about? Uh. If you're quite done here, hurry up and release me. No, I'm gonna talk to Peter here. The subject of the sink remembers certain persons or objects that appear in Somnium. But they might not have a clear form. Our dreams are sometimes vague or unclear, after all. Even the subject of the dream themselves. I told you earlier that the sinker experiences the dream from the perspective of an observer. That is why the person creating the dream can appear within it. But perhaps they do not have an objective view of themselves. Like a mirror or picture. Perhaps he's never watched himself on television. Rare for a politician, but not unheard of. He lacks that objective picture of himself. He remains stoic and unattached despite his position of power. I find that quite powerful. To be able to put your ego aside and see yourself as God sees you is an ability many charismatic people share. He may not have a rational, objective assessment of himself. So, even if this figure is ambiguous, it could be so. Indeed. During a sink, the sinker's consciousness, or ego, is brought into the subject's somnium. They enter the subconscious mind, or more accurately, sink into it. At this time, the sinker's memories are left in their original body. Picture an egg. The ego is egg. the egg yolk that goes into the subject's brain. The sinker's memories are the whites which remain in the shell. You can't the sinker, that. or rather the sinker as their pure ego, experiences the subject's somnium. But to be precise, it is not only ego. Egg. When synced, a modicum of memory data does get sent into the subject's brain. Imagine separating an egg yolk from its whites. No matter how you try, some of the egg whites will always stick to the yolk. Egg. This is just like that. Egg. Alright, Peter, I'm sorry. I have to use the bathroom, but keep talking, okay? Okay. Imagine the human brain as being made up of two elements. Memory and algorithmic structure. The former is preferable because the latter can be problematic. It can output things based on the inputs it is given. To make this easier to understand, compare this to a computer. Memory is like your data stored on a hard disk. The algorithm is the program. This program controls everything, from higher cognitive functions to primitive instinct. This program is what creates the phenomenon of consciousness.
damn it, Peter. You finished talking. Okay, I'm back. Hello. I saw it on the monitor. Big pissin. Iba saving no. Iris as she was being stabbed. Of course, since you and Iba are one and the same, it's like you saved her, Date. Yeah, I was pissed. But that was just a dream. It's not real. No. Saving her insomnium won't save her now. I'm sorry. No, nothing cat. yet. Oh, my they arrived cat. a while ago, but that warehouse is owned by Okira Fishery. I know. Yep. Iba, can you check to see if it's the Okiura we know? Searching. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you know that what we find in Somnium can't be submitted as evidence in court. Besides, we don't even know for sure if that figure was so. You said it was. I said that it's probably him. Um, excuse me. Yes? I'm right here. I can hear everything you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Alright, so, Sejima. I've been telling you I don't know anything. That's impossible. I saw Iris in your dream. You have to have some memory of her. What are you talking about? I don't understand a word of this. How did you know that she was stabbed, though? That's my uh, that's my problem. Come to think of it, I still haven't heard your explanation for this. Two days ago, you called Shoko Nadami just after 9 p.m. Why? That is a private matter that I will not discuss with you. Excuse me? What were you doing at 5 p.m. two days ago? Reading a book at home. Huh? You can ask my housekeeper or my bodyguards. They will confirm that for you. That does match what the bodyguard said earlier. But they're like family to him. They're not above telling a lie to protect their boss. I didn't. Are you planning on acting dumb all night? How did you know Iris was stabbed? Mm -hmm. I heard it. Hmm? What? On my way to this place, I heard that woman over there talking. Something about a girl who got stabbed in the back. Are you talking about me? Yes, you. I don't remember exactly what I said. It's possible that I mentioned a body with stab wounds to the back. Hmm? Boss. It is impossible to determine now. He very well may not have seen Iris's body. No, he still must have. He was in the warehouse. But does that mean we can conclude for certain that he saw the corpse? In short, it is your ego algorithm, what you call your mind. Recognition, cognition, consciousness. All of these processes are incomprehensible without the ego algorithm. However, the Wadjet system is revolutionizing the way we think about consciousness. The Wadjet system controls my core programming. Using Wadjet, we could map the neural circuitry of the human brain. And we discovered a specific circuit that is key to the phenomenon of consciousness. However, we human beings are still unable to fully grasp it. It's far too complicated. But even if we don't understand it, we can still use it. You don't have to understand electromagnetism to use a microwave oven. The Wadjet system is how we are able to extract the sinker's consciousness. That is what makes sinking possible. Oh. Date, the investigation team is calling. This is Date from Abyss. What happened? Hey, sorry to call you out of the blue. 
There's something we want to check. It's now a good time. Sure, what is it? You said you found a body at Okiura Fishery Cold Storage Warehouse. The one at Ariake? Warehouse District? Yes, that's right. Huh. Okay. Why? What happened? It's not there. It's, uh, not Damn here. It. What's not there? We searched all over the warehouse. We didn't find any bodies. Oh, no. Ah! Cold storage warehouse, Sunday, 11.25 p.m. What do you mean there's no body? Yeah, we looked everywhere, but nothing. Date, I am not doubting you. However, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I saw it. I know I saw it. I saw Iris's body with my own right eye. Hmm. I thought. Then perhaps someone moved the body. Between the time we left and CSI arrived. No. There's another possibility. Huh? There is? Vroom, vroom. What is the possibility? Sawgun Residence, Sunday, 11.58 p.m. Huh? Date? Huh? Harris! W what are you doing? Barging in without ringing the doorbell? Huh? Oh, you see, Mizuki ended up staying at my place. Um, something wrong? Huh? The world... changed. Day 4 Monday, Su AI or Surai. Police Headquarters, Monday, 9.32 a.m. So because of... Oh. Iba and I saved Iris during the sink yesterday. She wasn't killed. True, but that was only a dream. Maybe the dream changed reality. That's what I'm thinking. Impossible. Okay. Then how else would you explain it? Iris came back to life. I mean... The, the thing is, so know that somebody was stabbed, but he doesn't know who that woman was. So it could have been another woman that looked like Iris. Maybe? Uh -huh. Date and Iba saved Iris Insomnium, and that changed the history of the real world? Hmm. Well, I guess it's not impossible. That isn't what you said yesterday. <laughs> that was then, this is now. A woman's mind changes with the phases of the moon, you know. No, it doesn't. Anyway, I believe in Date. I trust him more than anyone else in Abyss. It is absurd. Not possible. Dreams are figments of the imagination. An incident which took place entirely in your mind cannot have any bearing on the real world. That is preposterous. Consider it. If you were to find money in your dream, does your bank account balance go up in reality? If you were to be attacked by aliens in your dream, does a swarm of UFOs invade Earth? But at the warehouse, I... You must have been hallucinating. Within Mizuki's Somnium, you saw Iris's frozen corpse. It is affecting your mental state. Last night, you were so phased by it that you couldn't speak. If it bothers you to this degree, why not go talk to Iris? Congressman Sejima is suspicious in more ways than one. Exhibit A. Three days ago, so-called Shoko Nadami's phone. 
we still don't know exactly why. He only told us it was meant to be private. Exhibit B. Sosajima was at Okiura Fishery Warehouse last night, but he didn't inform us of this. There must be something he doesn't want us knowing. Exhibit C. So was an Iris's Somnium. Dreams are constructed from memories, yet the good congressman denies he ever knew Iris. Her cell phone is on. I can trace her via GPS. She is currently somewhere in the Lemniscate building. I sent him home yesterday. You released him? What was I supposed to do? We can't hold him without solid proof. What we saw with Iris hasn't happened yet. In any case, we have to speak with him again. I have done some research. As the name suggests, the company is owned by the Okiuras. The same Okiuras we know. Renju's father created the company. Another connection to Renju. No, actually. Currently, Okiura Fishery has nothing to do with Renju. The company has been managed by office representatives for the past 17 years after Renju's father died. Renju holds no shares and is not involved in the management. In short, Renju did not inherit the company from his father, and it was instead given to other persons. But it can't be a coincidence. It certainly is suspicious. Stranger things have been known to happen. Two days ago, Date found Iris's frozen corpse in Mizuki Somnium. It must have been a prophecy. Boss. There's a lot of stuff in this world that can't be explained by science. That is true. Boss's neck for change is one of her good qualities. Not having beliefs is what she believes in. That's how she established herself as a major player in the police department, because she believes what she wanted to. I would suggest searching the warehouse again. You may be able to discover why Iris was resurrected. Mizuki went to Bloom Park three nights ago. She was prompted by a Nile message from Renju. Mizuki, Daddy got caught up in something serious. Please come to Bloom Park Merry-Go-Round right away. There are three possibilities. One, Renju killed Shoko, or was an accessory to the murder. Two, Renju was threatened or blackmailed into luring Mizuki to the scene. Three, the culprit used Renju's phone to send the Nile message. In any case, the motive is still unknown. We need to talk to Renju. Renju? Where did you go? You asked Mama at Marble for information regarding Renju Okiura, correct? That it is, is possible correct. she may have something for you by now. I asked Mama for information too, but I had to promise... <laughs> oh, sorry. Moma, meeting with Iris. Moma can wait for now. We can talk to Iris's mom as well. She was Renju's classmate, right? Iba told me about her. Summary, please. There are four people I should talk to. So Sejima, Iris and Hitomi Sagan, and Mama. And I need to check the warehouse one more time. We have many avenues of investigation. Let's get moving. Okay. Sejima Residence. So Sejima is a key person of interest in this case. Earlier, the boss cited three points of suspicion against him, and I agree with her assessment. I checked the call logs of So's phones. Congressman Sejima has one phone under his name, and a burner phone rented under a fake name. Did you find anything interesting? Unfortunately, no. Really? But I do have something. 
I looked into So's secretary's phone. One call in particular stood out to me. Huh? It was one week ago. From Fuchu Prison. Oh? The caller identified themselves as inmate number 89. Number 89? Yes. This is most likely the same person who called HQ. I know who killed Shogun Adami. Murder. He is serving a life sentence for multiple counts. He was imprisoned six years ago. Six years ago? From what I can determine, he is an assassin. He accepts jobs from the criminal underworld for substantial rewards. His code name is Falco. Falco? Correct. Unknown. You would have to ask Mr. Sejima for that information. Number 89 said he knew who killed Shoko. He did. But that may be a lie. Does he have any connections to the Cyclops serial killings? Unknown. In all honesty, I have no idea. Unknown. You don't know? He is not registered in any databases. He could be a foreigner or recent immigrant, but it would be impossible to determine from where. However, I did not detect any accent in his speech. I believe we can conclude that he grew up in Japan. Number 89. Should we visit Fuchu Prison? No, we don't have time. Call up boss. Tell her to request that number 89 be brought to Abyss. Roger. Sejima Residence, Monday, no time. I heard there was no body found at the cold storage warehouse. Isn't your investigation over? No. I have a look. A merman. <laughs> so is a wealthy politician. It is no surprise to me that he has a merman. Huh? Wait, a merman? Tree. No. Big green mochi? Actually, now that I look closer, it's just a bush. A spherical bush. Speaking of gardens, what kind do you prefer? I like a well-manicured lawn. But some bushes aren't bad either. Oh my god. I mean, what? Oh my god. Uh, why? Why, Date? Lantern. Stone. Not a mochi. <laughs> There's a garden lantern. Can I click at the sky? Anything else that I can click on? Maybe, maybe. Maybe. Maybe bridge. Pun. Oh, hey everybody! I'm a merman. Huh? I heard a strange voice just now. Could it be? Huh? Hey, so. You are beginning to irritate me. Yeah. What did you want to talk to her about? What is the private matter you mentioned? What is your relationship with her? I'll answer your questions when you present a warrant. <sighs> How many times do I have to tell you? I don't know that girl. I've never seen her before. Date. <laughs> I knew he was lying. This proves it. I am having difficulty determining his motive for lying. After all, 
Iris was not killed. Maybe he's got a secret with her he doesn't want us knowing. What are you hiding so? I told you I will not answer that question. And why not? We didn't find anything there. There's nothing to hide. It appears that he will not respond. Number 89? Who is that? An inmate at Fuchu Prison. He used to go by Falco. He was an assassin. Odd, finding such a person in Japan. What about him? About a week ago, he called your secretary. I don't know anything about that. He was probably calling for a pardon or some such nonsense. My secretary probably decided it wasn't worth my attention. If you need information, you can ask her. I can't help you. Haven't you people got enough? I'm very busy. Excuse me. Oh, actually, I do have one more thing to tell you. To be honest, Kaname Date, I don't like you. I don't ever want to see you again. So I suggest that you don't show your face here anymore. It's what's best for both of us, understand? Soul walked away sternly. Who does this guy think he is? Date? Date, your blood pressure is skyrocketing. Any higher could kill you. Ugh. <sighs> Calm. Relax, Date. We still have much to do. I know, I know. Okay. <laughs> let's go to let's go to Marble. Let's go see Mama, Date. Marble, Monday, no time. You need more info on Ren? I'm sorry to waste your time, but I don't have anything for you. I see. Well... I could use a little help down there, if you know what I mean. <gasps> I do not know what she means. Perhaps you should take her up on her offer. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh, Falco? You know him? I know him as a famous assassin in the underworld. Just rumors, though. Nothing specific. What kind of rumors? Mm, he's good. 100% success rate. No evidence. He was a world-class killer. Did you ever meet him? Nope. I don't even know what he looks like. Any other info? I know he's connected to the Kumakuras somehow. Them again. That's about it. You know about Renju and the Kumakura gang, right? Yeah, I know. I heard it from his own mouth right here. Do they have anything to do with the talent scandal at Lemniscate? Maybe now they do, since Renju is the president of Lemniscate. But even before that, Renju and the Kumakuras go way back. All the way back to high school. Hey, Date. Have you ever seen a dead body? I remember Renju saying that to me after he and I went through a bottle. You're a policeman. I don't know what department, but I assume you aren't handing out traffic tickets. So, how about it? I didn't answer. I turned the question around on him. What about you? Me? Well, yeah. Not just one. Countless bodies. When I was in high school, I had a pretty crazy job. You know the Kumakura gang? I was hooked up to one of their phone fraud scams. I just had to go collect the money from drop points and give it to the Kumakuras. It was an easy job. Eventually, I became friends with the higher-ups. They started taking me with them on jobs. What jobs? 
The target was always an elderly person from the country with no family. Elderly folk who owned a lot of land, you know? They live every day in loneliness and desperation. You just have to be nice to them. That's all it takes. You guys would get to know the old people and they would set up an adoption process. After that, you just have to get them really drunk, throw them in the tub full of hot water, and they pass. Just like that. Heart attack, brain hemorrhage, or they simply go to sleep and drown. The police almost never investigated. It always looked natural, like they died of old age. So the adopted gang members would inherit the land. Then we sell it and make massive profits. I watched a lot of people get killed like that. And I've seen journalists get killed for getting too close to the truth. So I... I... <laughs> Why am I telling you all this? <sighs> Are you going to arrest me? I took a sip from my glass. I didn't say anything for a while. <sighs> you didn't do it yourself, right? No, I was always the lookout. But still... Date, I... Tears fell to the counter, unending. We didn't say another word until the ice in the glass had melted to nothing. Wait, no, ah! I don't have anything else for you. Sorry, I'm not much help. No, don't worry about it. Can you come back again tonight? There's a regular here who was good friends with Ren. They should be here tonight. If you ask him, he might have some information for you. Tonight? Yes. I'll be waiting for you. I find it calming. Why is that? Don't ask me. <laughs> Sagan Residence. Okay. Sagan Residence, Monday. No time. I apologize for yesterday. I arrived uninvited. No, I'm grateful. Thanks to you, Mizuki has her voice back. No, I didn't do anything. Is rising from the tea. I've been wondering about that picture. Iris drew it when she was twelve. That's you on the left and Iris in the middle, correct? Yes. And who's on the right? The man I was dating at the time. It was only for three months, but... I met him about six years ago. Have you been to the Ikume Shrine in the Minato district? I was praying there one day, and I heard a voice. Well, more like a groan. Behind the shrine, I saw a man sitting on the ground. He was bleeding badly from his stomach. I took out my phone to call an ambulance, but... He grabbed my wrist, and he held me, and then... Kissed me. I was shocked, but when I stared into his eyes, then I heard footsteps, and then a bunch of men yelling. They were looking for him. When the voices and footsteps faded, he let me go. Don't call an ambulance, and don't call the cops. I knew he had to be a criminal, so I took him to an underground clinic I knew. You took him to a mob doctor? Renju's friend. I only met him once. Is that the person we're gonna see tonight at Mama's? Even though we had our first kiss seconds after meeting each other, it took a long time before I got to see him again. The first time we held hands was when we watched a horror movie together. The first time I took his arm was when we went to a haunted house in an amusement park. <laughs> but I wasn't the one who grabbed him. A zombie jumped out and scared us, 
and he clung onto my arm. <laughs> he had that cute side to him. And I was falling in love. Aww. Our second kiss was in the car. Ugh. It's cliche, I know. But we drove around at night, looking at all the lights. We parked our car near a warehouse and kissed. I don't think we ever said I love you, but we both knew. We were getting closer and closer. I introduced him to Iris about a month after I first met him. Iris never had a father figure in her life before. She warmed up to him immediately and treated him like a real dad. From then on, it was always the three of us together. We would go to the beach, to the river, the zoo, the amusement park. Going to barbecues with another person was a new experience for me and Iris. Everything felt so fresh. Every day was so... exciting. Oh, sorry. You asked about the picture. He wanted to make Okonomiyaki one day. He was working with the hot plate. It was ridiculous. He was trying to flip one, and it flew up in the air and landed right on my head. Oh. Iris saw the whole thing and laughed and laughed. I hadn't seen her laugh like that in a long time. I was having so much fun that I put an Okonomiyaki on their heads, too. Flop, flop. I added the Benito flakes and mayo and sauce. At this point, there was no going back. Eggs flew, flour going everywhere. <laughs> the room was not a pretty sight. Aww. After our battle, we laughed like crazy. We were rolling around on the floor. So Iris decided to draw it. It's nostalgic. But those days didn't last. Six years ago, in November, <gasps> a man with a gun broke into our house. Fortunately, Iris wasn't home at the time. But my boyfriend was. That's why the gunman came. He wanted to kill him. He wanted to kill him and he would never stop. He pulled the trigger. I tried to protect him. The bullet hit me, but the police arrived. They were both arrested and incarcerated. Why was he after your boyfriend? Before he met me, he committed some terrible crime. I don't know the details, but it was awful. So he became a target for underworld criminals. I don't know exactly why, but I know that he betrayed them in some way. May I ask you something? Of course. I had heard that that incident was a random break-in gone wrong. Oh. That's not true. I lied about it at the time, because of Mizuki. Mizuki is Iris's friend. If she found out, Iris would find out too. I didn't want Iris to know. Know what? That I was dating a criminal. He was her father figure. Iris looked up to him. If she found out about his past... There's a drawing on the wall. Iris drew it when she was 12. How to handle a monster parent? Music is so calming. I love the piano. Like a ski resort with no skiers. <laughs> Today's a holiday. I suppose there's never a day off for a detective. Oh, but you aren't a detective, right? Technically, yes. But I still deal with crime. I see. Today is a holiday. You forgot too, didn't you? <laughs> well, Iris. I put Iris through so much. I was 19 and single when she was born. Oh. People didn't take kindly to that. But Iris was such a fighter. She always protected me. I remember, one time at the nursery, some of the other mothers were talking about me. Iris ran up to them and said, 
don't talk about my mommy. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the mother, but it's Iris who's always protecting me. About your parents. They died when I was 17. Oh. I was an orphan, and my relatives lived far away. They might have taken me in, but I was already in my second to last year of high school. It wasn't a good idea for me to move that late. Oh. So I decided to stay here, by myself. And take care of Iris. Yes. All alone. But Renju would help sometimes. It was always just me and her. Vacations, barbecues, zoos, amusement parks. Just me and her. Oh, that reminds me. When Iris was five, there was a children's theater show in Bloom Park. It was called Milky Moon. It was about girls as magical space rangers and such. She loved singing and dancing. Even as a kid, whenever she heard music, her body would start moving. It was a quirk of hers. And she did it at the show, too. Toward the end, when all the Milky Moon girls were dancing to the ending song, Iris climbed up onto the stage and danced with them. I tried to stop her, of course. I grabbed her arm and tried to get her to sit, but before I knew it, she was up there, dancing. And everyone was so excited. Even I was dancing by the end of it. <laughs> when it was over, she had the biggest smile on her face. Mama, you're a good dancer. That's the kind of girl she was. Whenever she sees someone playing music on the street, she'll run up and join them, right then and there. Music at the train station, the crosswalk beeping, even at convenience stores. When their little chime played, she would start dancing. It almost got her into trouble once. She was on the jungle gym and a truck drove by. Oh my god. It was playing loud music out the windows. She climbed up to the top and started dancing, but she lost her balance and fell. She fractured her leg pretty badly. It was on a Sunday, and it was hard to find an open emergency care. I was carrying her on my back, running and running through town. I could still hear her crying. Will I still be able to dance, Mommy? Can I still dance? She cried and cried into my shoulder. It was the only time she ever cried so much. Uh, no, um, that's not true. There was one other time. Six years ago, I was the victim of a shooting. Huh? After the surgery, Iris came in running, and she was sobbing. Well. Mommy, don't die! Don't die! <laughs> Please don't die, Mommy! Don't die! <laughs> I swore to myself then that I would protect her no matter what. Iris is everything to me, more important than my own life. You asked me that yesterday. There's no point in hiding it. I told her about Renju's disappearance. Right from the hospital? I'm sorry. I have no idea. Date, we can't spend time reminiscing. We have to get moving. I know, but... Yeah, let's go. Feminine skate. I just love the piano music. It's nice and calming. Lemna Escape, Monday. No time. I am so aggro right now! Oh, uh, hi. Who says that? Why are you angry? You backed out on your Shovel Forge promise. I didn't make any promises. Um... You promised me a date, though. I did go to your house. Two minutes before midnight? And you didn't even take me anywhere. <laughs> yeah, because we only had two minutes. We could have gone somewhere. Iturup, Kunashir, Shikotan, Habomai? Absolutely not. Then you should have come earlier. Well, uh...
Oh, okay, she's here too. Cool. Uh, look. Girl. Had to make good soba. I'll bring that one home for later. Nothing displayed. So I should lose some weight. Oh. I didn't say so fat. Huh? Dante, look! Plant. It's a terraphilic camelifolia! Look! Yay! Yay! Go, terraphilic camelifolia! I read it gets awfully excited about insects. That's so cute! It's a high table. Date, I don't understand. You want me to say hi to this table? That's not what I said. <laughs> Door. There's probably an office back there. Monitor. It's Shinsen Chatran. What? Who is that? Says, uh, what? Logo. Receptionist desk. Abstract painting. Like it? It's called Fisherman Shagging a Common Dandy. Okay. Alright, sorry, uh, Iris, but we gotta talk to her real quick. Uh, why? Why is this a question? Uh, why is this an answer? Huh? Huh? Okay, okay, uh, I want to too. We've been looking for him. We've been getting so many calls, it's hard to keep up with. Oh, God. Um, why? Well, because it may lead to something in the future. Hmm, I don't know. Date, we're on an investigation. Yeah. Just let me have this. No! Oh god. That's enough. Thank you, Iba. I'll come right out of your eye socket if you don't stop. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> I'm going to pop out. Oh my god. I Iba flew out of my left eye and started dancing on the desk. The receptionist immediately fainted. Iris saw the whole thing and also fainted. And so my story ended. Wait, is that it? Why? The end? Huh? Is that actually an ending? But I couldn't let that happen, so I decided not to ask her for her information. <laughs> You cheeky motherfuckers! <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I like guys that like New Guinea fruit bats and yellow spotted neck turtles. I cannot even picture that. <laughs> um, I'm 5'4". That is clearly not what you meant. <laughs> All right, Iris. Uh... What about him? I don't need to hide it. I told her about Ringer's A traffic accident? I'm worried. Any idea where he could have gone? I'm sorry, no. That's a lie. I've seen him on TV. Ever met him? No. Not at all. No, not at all. Mm. You're a good liar. Off? Yeah, from school. Oh, yeah, it's a holiday. So I decided to come to Lemnus Gate. We're going to do a recording for a show soon. I know you were mad about our date, but why was your phone off? 
I couldn't get a hold of you. Um... Last night around 2 a.m., someone visited you. Who was it? And you left the house as well. Where did you go? You really want to know? Yes. And you'd do anything for the answer. Yes. All right, then. Shovel Forge. No. Then go on a date with me. Again, no. But you owe me for yesterday. I told you I couldn't get a hold of you. Objection. <gasps> Even if you did get a hold of me, you didn't want to see me anyway, right? Until you fulfill your promise, I won't tell you anything. Oh. <sighs> Iris, promise you won't laugh, but I saw something at the cold storage warehouse last night. What? Your dead body. <laughs> I told you not to laugh. But come on, Date. I'm alive. I'm right here. Look, I can jump around. Woohoo! Stop. I'm serious. <laughs> I like how she clapped. In my dream, I saved you from being killed. And here you are. Which is why I was like that when I went to your house yesterday. Sorry, there's no point in telling you all this. No, it's fine. Sorry for laughing. I just didn't know what was up with you. Huh? I believe you, Date. Maybe you were in a parallel world or something. <coughs> yeah, I am. <coughs> explanation. So, what are we doing? Shovel Forge. What do you mean? For our date, of course. God. <sighs> Fine. Fine. Hey, wait a minute. Yay! So you'll play Shovel Forge with me? Uh... I will not. So, we'll go on a date then. Yes. Deal. And you have to honor our agreement this time. I will honor it. I can't it. believe it. Oh, but we can't go right away. I have a recording coming up. I should be done by three, though. Tessa, we're starting soon. Got it! So, Date, meet me back here at three? If you ditch me, I will be beyond furious. Anyway... Bye for now. Peace. Parallel worlds and alternate timelines in an Uchikoshi game? I don't believe it. I don't believe it either. Iris smiled and strolled over to the studio. There is no point remaining here. Hello, how are you doing? Let's Hi. get moving. Hi, Stefan. How are you doing? Playing AI Samian Files. I'm sorry, I, but I know you're jealous, okay? I just, I felt bad that I kind of just gave her a two-minute date, all right? I'm sorry. Cold Storage Warehouse. Monday. No time. With Aiba in my left eye socket, I walked into the cold storage warehouse. I could see my breath. I looked around, shivering. Nothing seemed changed from last night through, though, not through. You first arrived here yesterday at 9 p.m. At that time, lying on this workbench was... Iris's dead body, covered with a white cloth. But the second time... The corpse was gone. It was 11.25 p.m. But the body could not have simply vanished. Crime scene investigation was here before 11.25 p.m. When did they arrive? According to the report, 10.30 p.m. After we finished sinking with So. It took them an hour and a half to get here? Correct. Why did it take them so long? Unknown. The report does not specify. Perhaps a result of outside influence. Outside influence? In any case, there is nothing of note about the bench. Examining it will not reveal any further information. A forklift. It doesn't seem like it's in use. 
It was likely just left here. A switchboard. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. A forklift. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. That machine is used to cut ice. Do they store ice here? There are only a few items on the shelf. It is likely that this warehouse isn't in regular use. It's a wooden box. There is nothing inside. A crane on the ceiling. Nothing has changed. There are numerous cardboard boxes on the shelves. There is nothing abnormal about them. Hi, I'm Jermaimon. Iba, the jokes, you've got to stop. <laughs> Oil jump. It doesn't have magical pockets, though. That's cute. Something here. There's something here that I didn't investigate. It's bugging the heck out of me. Box. We searched the warehouse again, but we didn't find anything. Nothing. Useful. Okay. But finding nothing may, in fact, be something. What do you mean? I was just thinking out loud. Let's get going. Date, your temperature is dropping. At this rate, they might find your body in here. Yeah, we're gonna get the hell out of here. If that's headquarters, let's go. Police headquarters, Monday, 2.49 p.m. I returned to Abyss HQ with Iba. I needed to talk to the boss. As I entered the room, boss smiled like she was waiting for I me. I took care of what you asked for. Number 89? He's here. In the interrogation room. I'm on it. You'll go without me this time. I have some errands to run. One of the higher-ups needs me. I'll have Pewter go to the interrogation with you. Understood.
Let's get started. Number 89. Your real name. I don't know, I forgot. Uh, his voice is... Mm. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. It's not like I'm counting. Djibouti. Northeast Africa. A small republic of roughly 900,000. I don't take kindly to stupid lies. Oh, you know about that. It's true. I called Sejima's secretary. I got him on the line and I told him something very important. You spoke with him directly? Yeah. What did you tell him? I told him to call somebody. Somebody? I can't tell you anymore. <sighs> All right, let's get back to the topic at hand. Two days ago, you called our investigation office. You said you know who killed Shoko Nadami. That's right. Who? Hey, don't be so hasty. We haven't agreed on a deal. You're gonna let me out of prison, right? Yes, I promise. Date. <laughs> You're lying. You don't want to release me. That's fine. I was expecting this anyway. I just wanted a good excuse to leave the prison. What do you mean? You really want to know? Here's what I mean! <gasps> You'll make a good hostage for me. Take me to the exit. Now. Uh, 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 uh. Police headquarters Mondays, 4.06 p.m.? Oh, darn. Are you kidding me? A criminal serving a life sentence just escaped from Metro Police. I ordered everyone to keep quiet about this, but it's only a matter of time before the press sniffs this out. We need to get number 89 back before then. Uh, uh, Peter? Uh huh? He punched out an officer and stole his clothes. He put on the uniform and brought me with him at gunpoint. Well, he had the gun in his pocket, uh, hiding it. No one on the floor even knew this was happening. He got on the elevator and made it to the ground floor. He even stole my security card. He said he'd kill me if I tried anything. I suppose the whole escape took him about uh, five minutes. He must have planned this. You're rather calm about all this. I'm coming down from being terrified for my life. I'm in a bit of a fugue state right now. Where's my gun? Number 89 still has it. But don't worry. I have a spare. I'll what? give it to you later. Where's 89? How would I know? After he got to the exit, he let me go. I didn't see where he went. I collapsed right there. I'm sorry. Boss, it's my fault he got away. I'm sorry. Don't waste time apologizing. Oh. Go catch him. I'm the one who has to go on an apology tour now. <sighs> you really messed up this time. Okay. I'm sorry, boss. Dante, I know you are already aware of this, but there are security cameras all over this compound. I checked all of them. Number 89 fled in a car that was waiting for him. Oh? So he had an accomplice? Yes. Did you see who was driving? I did. <gasps> who was it? You and I know him well. Huh? Rancho? I told Boss and Peter what Iba revealed to me. Renju? W why
I thought it was he told me. Date, Moma is calling. Moma. Moma, from the Kumakuras? I'll connect him. Hey, Date. I just got the word. Renju's been seen. What? Where? Hey, don't forget our deal. <laughs> deal? What deal? Asa. You forgot already? I'm talking about Tessa. Oh, right. I'll be waiting. You know what to do. What should we do? We have no choice. We have to take her. To MoMA? Yes. Well, I'm glad that we did we did the date. Lemnus Gate, Monday, 4.43 p.m. Oh my gosh! Late, 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 late. You're late. Iris. I'm going home. <laughs> Never! Have you forgotten the vows you exchanged? Because... Are you drunk? No, of course not. <laughs> You're drunk. I kid, 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 kid. I'm kidding! I can't believe I'm gonna shovel forge with you. I'm getting excited! We are not shovel forging. I was talking about the date, silly. Shovel forge and a date are synonymous, apparently. So where are we going? <sighs> to a Yakuza office building. No point lying to you. I need you to come with me to an office. I'll have to inspect it, though. What? An insect show? <laughs> I didn't know you were into that. Well, okay, it's kind of weird, but whatever. Let's go to the insect show. Oh my gosh. She didn't completely understand, but I didn't have time to... to I took Iris to the Kumakuras. Come across office, Monday, 5, 10 p.m. So, where are the Azyptilopraticolas? Uh, Tessa? <laughs> oh, is this guy the Azyptilopraticola? <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, oh my God. sorry. Are you the insect trainer? Go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Start the insect show now! Wait a minute. This is a gangster den. Took you long enough. Date, you tricked me! I wasn't trying to trick you. You just misunderstood me. But I wanted to see the bugs! I really did! Oh, so she likes insects as well. <laughs> Iva. <laughs> Mama. I held up my end of the deal. You sure did! You want to hear about Renju? Mr. Okiura? Sorry for bringing you here. I it's okay. You don't have to be scared, Tessa. We're not thugs. We're just a gang. Huh? About as contradictory as meatless beef. The old boss was really violent. He would take a cheese grater to someone's leg if they looked at him funny. <laughs> but after I took over, we went crystal clean. Crystal? Methamphetamines. No, we don't do drugs. <laughs> we don't deal with that stuff. We had to restructure the whole operation. Cut a lot of people off. Cut? Their throats. <laughs> no, not like that. <laughs> what happened to Mr. Okira? I heard he escaped the hospital. So did I. But I don't know anything more than that. Please tell me. Ranger's escape from the hospital was strange. Three things stuck out to me. I laid out the facts. Mizuki was lured to the place where Shoko's body was found by the message from sent from Ranger's phone. 
I found Iris's body in Okuria Fish and Cold Storage Warehouse. Earlier today, Renju fled with a prisoner escaping a life sentence, an assassin named Number 89. Alda, what were you saying about Tessa's dead body? Oh, well... Date saw a parallel world with my dead body in it! Thanks, Iris. A parallel world? I mean, yeah. Never heard of it? <laughs> oh, yeah! Of course I have! Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, right! Parallel worlds and all that oh shit. Yeah. I don't understand it, but I suppose he does. I understand it. Good, because I don't feel like explaining it. <laughs> but why would Mr. Okira do that? I don't know. He could be a hostage or an accomplice. Hmm. Either way, I need to find him. Yeah, that's Mama. Oh yeah, I haven't introduced this old man yet. I'm 24! Huh? Mama is lying. He is at least 48. Oh, okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry for not introducing myself. My name is Moma Kumakura. I work for a prestigious advertising agency. You run the Kumakura gang, right? You're like a mob boss. How did you know that? Is he stupid? Moma may not look it, but he's a huge ASET fan. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm a huge fan. Gambling. Bet, debt, ASET! Uh -huh. Worries. Uh, forget, fret, ASET! Now what does she say? ASET, you bet! Aww. Wow, my catchphrase! Thank you! <laughs> Aww, this, this is, this is so wholesome! <laughs> But sorry, Moma. I don't like gangsters. Oh. <gasps> I don't like gangsters either. <laughs> gangsters are awful. All those nasty Yakuza guys should drop dead, am I right? <laughs> uh, uh. Oh. They're out, looking for Renju. Besides, I can't have them here seeing me like this. Good point. Why do you care? Can I have it? <laughs> what? Can I have the ring? <laughs> Why would I give it to you? Hey, can I have the ring? Absolutely, of course <laughs> you can. Here, take it. Wait, 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 wait. no. I, I can't give you this. You're so cheap. Oh, my Come God. on, it's not like you're losing it. It's exactly like I'm losing it. <laughs> Aw. You guys are a good team. <laughs> like siblings. <laughs> okay, anyway. You said on the phone that you saw Renju. Yeah, I had all my people looking for him. So, tell me where he is. Hmm. I could. Hey, I held up my end. I brought Iris like you asked. Date, come here. Are you gonna punch me? Moma took me to the corner of the room. Yes? Date, I don't oh, quite oh, know no. how to ask oh, this, oh, but... Oh, no. Oh, no. Can you ask Tessa if I can shake her hand, please? <laughs> oh, that's it? Sure. Mama and I broke our huddle. Iris, could you do me a favor? A favor? He, uh, he wants to see your boobs. Huh? What the fuck, dude? I didn't say that! Oh, sorry. What I meant was, he wants to shake your hand. Oh, a handshake. Sure. I would never show my boobs. <laughs> Iris took Moma's hand gently and shook it. Dante, this is the happiest day of my life. It feels good to be the boss. So how about it? All right, here it goes. Renju was seen in two places. First, Sunfish Pocket, the maid cafe. Second, Ikume Shrine. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. 
Got it. Thanks. <sighs> no problem, bro. Really. Oh my god, bro. Can we go? Anyway, Moma, take care of Iris for me. What? Wh what? Wait! You're leaving me here? You'll be safe with him. <laughs> uh... Are you serious? Look at his face! Not to mention he runs a crime syndicate. What if he sells me to the highest bidder? Tessa, I would never do that! I told you, we're clean now. Uh... We all go home on time, we follow government regulations. Uh... See ya. Wait! What about Shovel Forge? I told you, I never promised to play with you. But you promised me a date! <gasps> Date! Is this true? You son of a bitch! <laughs> I'm gonna ignore that. Good idea. Date, you're gonna look for Mr. Okiura, right? Take me with you. If you do, I'll tell you about last night. Her late night visitor. Uh... Fine. Yay! Date, don't ignore me! A clean gang? <laughs> oh, that's just a toy. <laughs> oh, just a toy. <laughs> <laughs> what is going Let's on? Let's leave them alone for a while. We have two places to check. Sunfish Pocket and Ikume Shrine. I want to go to the warehouse, too. Where you found my dead body. Something bothering you? No, I'm just curious. Okay. Oh, and one more thing. Can we eat somewhere? Food sounds good. I haven't eaten in a while. Oh, my chest hurts. Getting hard to breathe. Dude. We're gonna go to Sunfish Pocket to get some food. Okay, bye. Sunfish Pocket, Monday. No uh, time. 999 reference. I saw a familiar face as I entered. It was Mizuki! Iris and I sat at Mizuki's table. Yeah, Mizuki! Wow. Whoa! This is surprising. What's going on here? Why are you two together? Oh, well, it's... Forget it. Thanks for letting me stay last night. Oh, no trouble at all. Anytime. You could even live with me if you want. <laughs> That's a great idea! The roommate I have right now really sucks. <sighs> this girl. Could I not? Those are some nice hip bones. I've heard that Renji was sighted here. When do you mean? When? I got the info a few minutes ago, but I don't know when he was seen. Oh. Ringing any bells? Well, he hasn't come by today, but yesterday. Yesterday? But I was here yesterday. It was after that. After you and Ota left. Why didn't you tell me sooner? ask and I don't have any way to contact you that is Damn true. It. we just missed him he was looking for Iris he was asking everyone where she was looking for me yeah did he give a reason no not in particular Iris can you think of why he would be looking for you? No, not at all. Mizuki? I don't know either. Anything else? Well, he did seem really sick. He was pale and sweating a lot. Must have been because of the accident. 
perhaps. Mizuki comes here a lot. She's really friendly with everyone. I like it here. Everyone treats me nice. Is it because you're the daughter of the owner? No, it's not like that. <laughs> We're BFFs! She wields extraordinary power with that trident. The Okiura family is really something else. <laughs> oh my god. Well... A triple ward sea devil or an anacanthus barbatus? That's an awful. He looks bored on the outside, but I bet he's nervous as hell. I understand, man. I do. You're just waiting for the right time. It looks like a lifesaver. But it's actually a calamari ring covered in white chocolate. Huh? Calamari ring? It could possibly be a calamari ring. You can see the kitchen. You back wanker! Do you not know how to prepare a monk fee? Sorry, chef. This is a really interesting place. <laughs> Yeah, cool, but on the inside, the mermaids are working hard. Those two shells on her chest are working hard too in their own way. Excuse me, Date. Keep at it, girls. Aw. Security cameras. Musical ordered a cream soda. I remember when she called me childish for ordering cream sodas. Menu. Nyat. Taimori Eating sushi off a naked woman for 780 yen? Let's go. <laughs> We're going. I made up my mind and my heart. Oh, that sign is wrong. Someone added letters. It's supposed to say Nita Imori. Boiled Newt. Nita Imori. Boiled Newt. Oh. <laughs> Boiled Newt. 780 yen. Honestly, that's almost as intriguing as the body sushi. Nudes aren't even fish! The source menu. There are pictures of the girls on display. Cash register in the doorway. Window. Chair. Checkbox. Huh? What was it? Oh, that was Iris. Oh, it wouldn't barrel. Sunfish pocket riddle time! What? Oh. There was a kid playing hide and seek who hid in a barrel. But he was found right away. Why? Well. Um. There was obviously a hole in the barrel. Oh, I see. I got it. Because there was a hole in the barrel. Correct! Wow, that was amazing! Date, you're a genius! Well, I'm nothing special. Oh my god. Damn you. Hi, <laughs> Boo. Tried it. Okay, okay, okay. Uh. No, no, no. We're gonna, we're gonna talk to Mizuki here. What are you gonna do? Scold me or something? Why do you care what I do? Why are you so angry? I'm not angry. In fact, I'm feeling good. Um, excuse me. A mermaid took me to the corner of the store. Mizuki was crying earlier. Crying? Yes. We were trying to cheer her up. What happened to her mom was... And we thought she was having a hard time. She must have come here looking for company. That's probably why she stayed with Iris last night. She didn't want to be alone. Shoko's body is still under the jurisdiction of the police. There has not been a ceremony, nor has the body been cremated. The culprit has not been caught, and we cannot locate Renju. And on top of that, her roommate has abandoned her. 
I did not abandon her. In any case, there are many ways you could calm Mizuki down. Mizuki is just trying to act strong. Please, try to understand. Why are you asking me about that? I was just curious. That company was made by my grandpa. But daddy has nothing to do with it. I don't know anything about the warehouse. I thought I told you this already. Don't ask me the same questions over and over. Date, look. She's lying? Possibly. She may just be excited or upset. The police asked me a bunch of questions. But I don't know where he is. She's my friend from back when I worked here. We would hang out outside of work, too. We'd go to haunted places and UFO sightings and stuff. Blow those boys away! Blow those boys away! Yeah, blow those boys! Huh? Mizuki, uh... Huh? You really shouldn't say that. Yeah! Uh... <laughs> oh my god, girl! <laughs> You're in elementary school? Mr. Okira helped me when I was just starting out. You know how my mom is single? He really supported her. He even changed my diaper when I was a little baby. I got hired by Lemon Escape all because of him. Iris used to stream all her own content. Like singing and dancing and gaming and stuff. But before we knew it, she went viral. Right, I heard about that. That's how she started getting offers, right? But because Iris's mom knows Renju, she decided to go with Lemon Escape. But there's more to it than that. There are other reasons. Daddy was totally taken in by her talent. Her talent? Dancing, really. Her dancing is what got her into Lemniscape. He knew ever since she was young that she would be talented. He didn't want any other agencies to have her. I didn't know that. Daddy's not the type to give compliments. <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing. I didn't know he thought of me that way. More than sleeping and eating? Well, maybe about the same as eating. Anyway, I've always loved moving my body ever since I was a little girl. And you're fast, too. Yeah, I did a lot of track meets. Were you always the anchor? Mm hmm. That's amazing. Hey, want to hear something cool? Iris is the goddess of rainbows in Greek mythology. She's the messenger of the gods. She's really fast. Rainbows being so fast to disappear was the source of the legend. You're as fast as your namesake, then. You want to race? <laughs> sure. Let me get the chance. Right here? Oh, I want to see, too. Me, too. I would also like to see that. I don't know. Come on, just show us. But... All right, I'll go set up. Wait! The mermaid didn't listen and hurried off. Jeez. Fine, if you insist. Yay! Iris, we're ready. Aww. All right, world! Get ready! See my dance! Invincible Rainbow Arrow! Hit it! Clap, clap, clap. Teacups that are flying.
on maps mystifying. You'll think that I'm lying. This old tale of mine. A journey through time. A permanent fire. Cold frost on the pyre. Fruit never expires. You've seen in your eyes. You've seen in your mind. While the old bell their heads, while the blind need the blind, the marble loses shine. The eye clouds by design. But we know. song. Mr. Okira wrote the music, and I wrote the lyrics. So it holds a special place in my heart. That's right. I forgot he wrote music. Yeah, he's really talented. I look up to him. He's done so much for me. I know I can rely on him more than anyone else. Iris, I still need to know. What were you doing Sunday at 2 a.m.? You haven't fulfilled your promise. This is the date. I fulfilled my promise. I told you. No info until the date is complete. Don't you get it? This date isn't over yet. Unfortunately, we didn't find Renju here. But we discovered that he was looking for Iris. But why? We can think about that later. Let's get going. Yeah, you're right. Let's go to the Mitsuha Diner. Just cause. Mitsushita Diner, Monday. No time? Ah, I'm so hungry! T tessa Why are you here? I told Date I was hungry, so... I've always wanted to eat here. I'll have my usual, Ota. Y yes right away! Oh my god. Ota flew into the kitchen. I just watched him go and took a seat. She's in the living room. I think she's watching TV. How about you? What are you doing here? I was just doing some meditation. Lying on the ground. He means sleeping. <laughs> Date, why are you with Tessa? <laughs> we are. Not Shovel Forge. On a date. Oh, a date. Huh. A date? <laughs> I'm on an investigation, and she wouldn't let me go. Date, I have some delicious fugu eggs. I promise they're not poisoned. Would you like some? No thanks. I'm fine. <laughs> You're still looking for him? Well, like I told you before, I don't know. Yeah, my dad taught me when I was little. You're making me something too, right? Sure, my treat, Date. Aww. Date, you're drooling. <laughs> oh, I'm just really hungry. Uh-huh, okay. Oh, 
Ooh, that's Payashi Samba's Hayashi Vangole. Huh? <sighs> Salt, pepper, a blend of red cayenne and spices, and an unidentified liquid. Mayumi's juice with mold? Kuroda Kazuaki's grilled tongue with salt. Meow. Aww. Huh? What are you doing? Oh, you don't know? It's good luck to imitate a cat in front of one of these. Really? Meow? Guess I'll have good luck. Aw, that's cute. Hey, Date. I've got this video of girls in bikinis washing this armored car. Wanna watch? Absolutely not. <laughs> Say a Martian. That's just a stool. Huh? Who cares? Beer. <laughs> a bucket? Hey, Tessa, could you kick that bucket there? Uh, sure. Like this? <laughs> yeah, but more. Like this? This is awesome! Huh? I did not realize there was someone more perverted than Date. <laughs> Why? Ring ring. Who's on the phone? Who cares? A family photo. Date, wanna have a pillow fight? Uh, Tessa, not in the store, please. November, but that calendar says January. <laughs> hey, what has two hands on its face? A mom playing peekaboo. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm. Kids see. Look, a chair for baby goats. Why would anyone bring a goat to a restaurant? <laughs> yeah, I have. Have you met Ota's mother, Mayumi? Yeah, but... I don't think she likes me. That's not true! Mom is just jealous of how pretty you are, Tessa! Not very reassuring. <laughs> Whether out of jealousy or otherwise, she still doesn't like Iris. Omelet rice! Ota's omelet rice is so good it gives me stomach cramps. Is that a compliment? <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Well, Ota appears to have taken it as a compliment. Iris, about your coming back to life. Hold it! Hold what do it. you mean, coming back to life? Uh... I decided to tell Ota about Iris' resurrection. Date jumped into a parallel world where I'm still alive! Tessa... died? Yep. Hey, can you tell me about this parallel world idea in more detail? Oh, sure. How should I explain this? Well... Um... Oh, I know. Let's play rock, paper, scissors. Huh? Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. If we tie, nothing happens. We just shake hands. If I win, you have to give me something. What if I win? I'll do anything. A anything? No! Mm-hmm. Anything. Date, your heart rate is rapidly increasing. Why exactly is that? All right, let's do this. Oh my god, Dante, why? Okay, let's go! One, two, three, shoot! Oh, what? Oh, god. 
Scissors. Shoot! Rock. Yay! I won! Oh, no, 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 no. You see, this this looks like scissors, but it's actually <laughs> paper. That doesn't make any sense. No, why did I throw out scissors? Why? <laughs> You're really not taking this well. <laughs> so, I get my prize. I don't have any money. I don't want money. Instead... Yeah. A kiss. Can you pet my head? Oh, never And mind. say, Iris is a cutie cutie? The cutest person in the whole wide world? A cutie angel? Fine. Iris is a cutie cutie. No, no, no. Put your heart into it. Iris is a cutie cutie. The cutest person in the whole wide world. A cutie angel. I repeated the whole thing while petting Iris on the head. <laughs> We just played rock, paper, scissors, right? I won and you pet me. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I obeyed your orders and did something really scandalous. Rewind time, do it now! <laughs> I do not have that functionality. I'm sorry, I'm not doing that. So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. So you think I jumped from a world in which you were dead to this one where you're alive? That's what I think. Huh. Parallel world, huh? I can't believe it, but... Sure you can! Parallel worlds exist! I believe it. Do you it. know about the Mandela effect? Or the Booba Kiki effect? I know the butterfly Or the 100 effect. million balls? If I explain that, would you believe me? Sounds really interesting, Tessa. I know some urban legends like that. The Spatial Temporal Man, and the Lost Friend, and the story of two sisters. I heard people talking about it. Do you know Nelson Mandela? Well, yeah. The former president of South Africa. He helped abolish apartheid. He died in 2013, but a strange thing happened. When the news broke, people all over the world thought, didn't Mandela die in prison in 1980? That's the Mandela effect. It's when your memory and history have discrepancies. There are lots of examples, like the name of this kid's book with the bears having different spellings, or people remembering that Kennedy was assassinated in a four-seat car, but in our world, he was in a six-seat car. Huh, I thought it was a four-seater too. Or that electric mouse from that video game. You probably remember the tip of its tail being black. It wasn't? Nope, it's all yellow, and the design didn't change. Oh. Lines from movies, company logos, historical events, and little things. The Mandela Effect is everywhere. Why do you think that is? Because those memories are from parallel worlds? That would explain it, I guess. Well, there's a mosquito. This world is Get full away. of really interesting Ow. stuff. But you know the most interesting thing of all? No, what? that humans exist at all. The universe developed in a very particular way to get here. If things were even slightly different, well, the galaxies and solar system and all of that might not have existed at all. And that means humans would never be born. And even if everything happened exactly like that, the probability of human life developing is extremely low. And yet, here we are. Imagine a box full of ping pong balls, labeled one to a hundred million. Would you be able to pick out the one? Not likely. But what if there were 100 million of you? Well, then one of us would definitely pick up the one. Exactly! The birth of humanity is so improbable that it's basically a miracle. But if there were multiple universes... Then it wouldn't be strange that at least one of them had humans in it. She is describing the Anthropic Principle. I may have underestimated her intelligence. Date, look at this picture! There's a, a famous experiment regarding this picture. 
You show this image to people around the world and ask a question. Which one is Booba and which one is Kiki? Believe it or not, 98% of people asked have the same answer. The rounder one is Booba and the jagged one is Kiki. Isn't that weird? In other words, everyone thinks that Booba is a certain way and Kiki is the other. It applies universally across languages and cultures. It's like something ingrained inside all humans. Like worshipping the sun and the sea. Or thinking that the mother is soft and the father is jagged. Regardless of your culture or background, you probably think this way. It's what Jung called the collective unconscious. There exists a second psychic system of a collective, universal, and impersonal nature, which is identical in all individuals. That's what Jung said about it. Think of it like bamboo. Bamboo stalks look like individual plants since they're separated. But underground, they're all connected. Human psyches might be like that too, connected at a subconscious level. That's... The parallel world? Yeah! You saved me in the dream, right? And dreams are all about our subconscious minds. So if you follow the roots... You get to another bamboo stalk. Yeah, something like that. There's this kid, A. He's in elementary school. Well, A had this close friend named Suzuki. One day, after school, they're walking home together. A turns around to tell Suzuki a joke, and Suzuki is laughing his butt off. And he's laughing and laughing, and he laughs so hard that his eyes fall out of their sockets. What? Well, they were hanging down out of his eye sockets. The nerves were still connected, but... A is, of course, in shock and doesn't know what to do. Suzuki just takes his eyeballs and jams them back into his eye sockets and keeps walking like nothing happened. So... A asks him about it. Like, hey, are you okay? Your eyes fell out. A is really concerned for his friend, you know? But Suzuki just says, yeah, I'm fine. He doesn't say anything about it. And by now, A is really curious. But he's not getting any answers. So they just part ways and go home. The story only gets weirder from here. The next day, A goes to school, and Suzuki's not there. A is confused and asks his teacher about it. Hey, where's Suzuki today? And the teacher says, Suzuki? Who's that? There's no Suzuki in this class. He says, what are you talking about? And he goes and asks all of his classmates about Suzuki. They all say the same thing. I don't know him. There's no Suzuki in this class. So that kid must have jumped into a parallel world without Suzuki. That's what I think. Couldn't Suzuki just be an imaginary friend or something? No, A was really serious about remembering Suzuki. It is weird. And there's no way you can pop your eyeballs back in like that. Well, not necessarily. There's such a thing as a dislocated eye. It actually isn't too hard to put your eye back in if it falls out. Ugh! Ota is correct. Dislocated eyes are easy to replace in their sockets. As long as none of the nerves or blood vessels were damaged, there are usually no lasting negative effects either. Oh my god, don't say things like that. But that That's doesn't gross. prove this Suzuki exists. Well, I guess not, but... So, there's this girl? Let's call her... B. She's practicing piano in her room, and her little sister is watching TV in the same room. B asks her to turn the TV volume down so she can hear her piano playing, you know? So B goes back to practicing, playing a little bit. But her sister doesn't turn the volume down. She's not listening at all. So B turns around to scold her. She was really gonna let her sister have it. But she's gone. She's nowhere to be seen. She thinks, huh, I wonder where she went. But then B hears her sister at the door. I'm home. B runs to the front door and sees her sister and her parents standing there. So B asks, when did you go outside? But her mom says, 
What are you talking about? She went shopping with me. B is really confused by all of this, of course. She asks her little sister about it, and she learns that her favorite TV show was on. And before she went shopping with her mom, she was deciding whether or not she wanted to stay and watch it or not. So depending on her decision, a parallel world was made. Yeah. What B saw might have been from the world where her sister stayed behind. Yeah, it's sort of like a common experience. A lot of people have experienced waking up in an uninhabited world they've never seen before. Hold on, this and most of them describe me. seeing the same person. The Spatial Temporal Man. He's supposed to be an ordinary old man wearing work clothes. The Spatial Temporal Man guides people back to the real world. He tells them, this world is not for you, or something. I'd like to meet him someday. So, this elementary school kid, let's call him C. He goes to school and there's a bunch of things on the floor. Postcards, towels, a coffee cup, rice bowls, a sink, lots of stuff. But C realized that those were all things from his own house. How did they get to the classroom? No one knows. It's not like anyone did it on purpose or there was a thief or anything. Maybe something happened that made two parallel worlds fuse. Yeah, maybe. I know a ton of stories like this. Like being suddenly transported one year into the future. And there's a missing persons report out for you. You look down at your phone, but you realize that it's not yours. It's not the one you remember having. You look through the contacts. And it's filled with names you don't recognize. Sounds scary. There's more, too. Like this town where everyone is Japanese, but they're speaking a completely different language. And all the signs and magazines and stuff have different letters. And it's not like Korea or China. It's the Japan we know, but the language is different. That's a prime example of a parallel world. Whoa. When did you two get so knowledgeable? Oh, I don't know. Tessa is always writing about this stuff on the internet. That's why I decided to research it too. That's how I learned all this stuff. Oh, hey, I know about conspiracies and secret societies too. I find that stuff fascinating. If you want, we could talk about those. Maybe next time. Now where's that omelet rice? Oh. Done. Oh, I brought the, brought the dish over. <clears throat> you laid out an omelet rice in front of me and Iris. Iris grabbed her spoon and a huge smile on her bon face. Bon appetit! Itadakimasu! She picked up a spoonful. No, actually, she tried to pick up a spoonful. Tessa, are you okay? I'm fine. My hand slipped. Let's eat. Iris and ate the omelet and rice near silence. There was no conversation, just the sound of the spoon hitting the plate. The, di the diner echoed within it. And before ah, long... Thanks for the food! Iris was totally re-energized. Her face was back to her usual easy smile. That was good! Ota, your omelet rice is seriously the best. Yeah, it was actually really good. Aw, oh, thanks. I owe it to my dad. He taught me well. I paid for the food and stood to go. Let's get going, Iris. Thanks again! Thank you! Come back soon! Gold storage warehouse, Monday. No time. I saw it. I'm sure. 
Your corpse, Iris. Right here. But I'm here now. Maybe I'm a ghost. You don't look like a floating sheet. You have legs. But maybe they're not legs. Maybe they're my boobs. I tried to picture Iris's breast swinging down there like that, uh, and then I decided not to. Didn't you say that you saved me in your dream? What did you mean by that? I told you that I'm with an organization called Abyss, right? Yeah, you told me two days ago. We find clues in the minds of suspects and witnesses. We enter what we call Somnium, a dream world projected by their subconscious. That's what the entire organization is about. How do you even do that? We have a machine that we call the Sync Machine. What is that? It's a Sync Machine. That's not an explanation. Tell me how it works. Well, um... I can explain, but it will require a bit of background to understand. Background? I guess not. No, I know what it is. It's the core programming behind AI, right? That's right. What's wrong? What? You're shivering. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Hmm? To borrow Pewter's explanation, with the advent of the Wadjet system, we can extract the data of the human psyche. This data is sent to the brain, which achieves the sync. I've heard of it. The blood brain barrier, right? Inside the school, there's an army of little teeny tiny soldiers that surround the brain. They protect the brain from bad stuff in the blood, right? That's almost it, yeah. The blood brain barrier describes the architecture of the micro vessels of the brain. It is a kind of shield that protects the brain. To get through, an object must be no larger than 0.4 nanometers. Objects too large to slip through the barrier cannot physically access the brain. Nanotech? Yeah! Technology related to really small things. Like, really teeny tiny things. And when they make a machine, they're called nanomachines. I heard they use them a lot for medical and tech fields. Some of the cutting-edge nanomachines can even go inside your body and cure illnesses. They can even cure cancer. And they go, beep, beep, beep. That's what mom said. Well, I don't know if it was like, beep, beep, or rrr, rrr. But anyway, nanotechnology costs tons of money. Only a few people can even afford it. My college professor said only the richest of the rich have nanotechnology. But he's pretty liberal, so... Largely accurate. Nano is a prefix meaning 10 to the negative ninth power. A nanometer is therefore 0 0.00000001 meters. The sync machine uses machines approximately 2.16 nanometers long. Viruses are on average 20 to 970 nanometers, so sync nanomachines are far smaller than that. This allows them to access neural circuitry during a sync, the nanomachines are used to write in the sinker's data. Okay, you have the basics down. Let me explain how syncing works. Sinkers like me equip the sync gear and use it to access the subject's brain. Inside the helmet are nano cables, and on the tip of each of these cables is a special nano machine. But the machine can't reach the brain through blood alone. Do you know why? The BBB soldiers say go away and push them back? Well, <laughs> yeah, kind of. But for the sync to work, we have to get the nanomachines into the brain itself. How do we do that? Drill a hole in the skull? No. In Shovel Forge, you can use a pickaxe and... No, it has nothing to do with tools. We don't have to open a hole. Skulls already have holes in them. One of those holes is the optic canal, which is a nerve canal located behind the eyes. The nano cables of the sink gear go through your eyes, then go to the back of your eye socket, then through the optic canal to the sea. The sea? The sea of brain cells, anyway. That sounds kind of romantic. 
Huh? It's only a chunk of protein. Once the nanocables arrive at their destination, they can begin the sync process. They slide into the brain like roots of a tree. And on the tip of each cable, the nanomachine sends and receives data. This is controlled by the Wadjet system. And that's how the sinker and the subject exchange information. Exchange? Think of it this way. The human brain has a max capacity of one psyche, one consciousness. Uh, yes, Multiple so instances I'm of consciousness inside to one brain can cause stream. a total no collapse of higher I'm brain functions. I'm actually about to end stream. You know how a car only has one steering wheel? If there were two, there would be accidents all over the place. Well, don't some planes have two control sticks? Okay. Eh, maybe it wasn't the best metaphor. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that the human body can only hold one person. If you try to have two people inside one brain, it will break. I see. Because of this, the sinker's data goes inside the subject's brain. And the only thing inside the subject's mind at the time of the sink are their memories. Like a house with no one inside. We sinkers break into the house, look for clues, and leave. All within six minutes. There's a time limit? Yes. Or else, the house will collapse on our heads. The neural circuits would become too deeply entwined with one another. To put it simply, the sinker would be trapped inside the subject's house. Thank you for explaining it. I don't completely understand how sync works, but still. Just don't tell anyone. This is extremely confidential. It's okay, I won't. Date, tell me this. Hmm? Who did you sync with yesterday? Didn't I show you his picture? Congressman So Sejima. So that's why you know so much about him. But you've never met him, right? I haven't, I swear. Hey, Date. You saw my corpse here, right? I did. I'm sure of it. And in So Stream, you saved me from getting killed. Yeah. And then somehow, I resurrected. Yeah. Hmm. Date, that means you're... Achoo! Date, is the cold too much for Iris? Yeah, I'm freezing too. Iris, let's get out of here for now. Roger that! So my corpse was on here? Yeah. Hey, get out of my house! What the hell? I'm a poltergeist inside the circuit board. What? <laughs> you said I was a ghost, right? Maybe I'm haunting the warehouse with spooky astral projections. What are you talking about, Iris? <laughs> that was cute. Hi, I'm Jemimon! You too. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. What the hell? The box made me think of like a giant robot. A what? You know, from kaiju movies. <laughs> Again, what? That caramel over there looks so good! Huh? Yeah, you're right. But if I tried to eat it in one bite, I'd break my jaw. What are you talking about, Date? That's a cardboard box. You started... <sighs> Never mind. Alright. <laughs> Alright, everyone. I'm gonna end the stream here. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I will be streaming Pokemon Platinum tomorrow and AI Sawman Files as well tomorrow. Uh, I'm really tired. I'm gonna go take a nap. <sighs> I will not be streaming Jackbox Saturday. I will be actually playing Jackbox with my friend Pengy, who is also streaming. I will link the Twitch uh, on Friday. 
if y'all want to see that. But until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, bye. Bye, Malphacore. Have a good night. But yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow when I play Pokemon Play Antinum. Or, you know, playing with friends with FPS games. Ugh, I don't know. But yeah, thank you again for watching. Have a good night. Get some food. Take a shower. Go use the bathroom. Do things like that. Okay, bye. Have a good night.